How's everyone doing today? Well, I hope. <laughs> A Craid, Cuba, Burpo, Marmot, Antoine, Boot Blacking, Diggle, Nico Jazz, Ten Elements. Oh no, Tweens. Tween Frequency, Virirare No, Apenarin, Amour Class, Team Move. Variable hit deze, 1% inlayer, 0 sure type, 0 no, of attacks, 1 dama g slash attack, by via point type 1, rare lien 3 10%, special attacks, 0 special defenses, eteral nes magie c euro si stan standaard intelligence, via lig en m t, neutral size, en psalonic ability, 0 level slash x punt p, value, attack, defense modus, 0 1 14 plus 1 per hit point, Cuba, thank you for the 100 bits. Welcome, Cuba. The tween. Oh, no. Tweens. <laughs> Dutch Interactive Museums. <laughs> Let's go to doodad time briefly. We haven't done this in a little while. I got, I got a little distracted. But. But we've got this. We've got the Nintendo GameKeeper. We're coming back to this. And hopefully we're finishing out the next game on this. So we played uh, previously, back in August. Back in August, we played... Uh, Kill seriously. Kill seriously. Hello, Duke. Oh, no, it doesn't say the donuts. Hello, Shadrock. I thought this guy said said emoji. Maybe they have to be spaced out. Maybe each emoji has to be separated by a space. I find that to usually be the case. But yeah, here we go. We played uh, we played Batman back in August. We finished that. That was a pretty good game. I had originally thought it was lame when I rented it as a kid. But uh, in 2020, I rated it as awesome. And then we've been, we've been slowly trawling our way through... Uh, through Dragon Warrior. I think I forgot to update the Erdrich's Sword and Erdrich's Armor uh, dates <clears throat> on there. But uh, we're getting ready to go again. Here we are in early October. It's taken a little over a month and a half, I'd say, to, to work my way through this game. Just um, doing a little stuff here and there. But, uh, but yeah, looking forward to finishing this. And then once we're done with that, we'll move on to uh, Fazanadu. Or uh, as it's called here, Faxandu. Faxandu. So we'll work on, work on setting that up. Noink. Text message. Yeah, facts. Maybe it's maybe it's facts and you. It's like an informational brochure about um, the new technology. Uh, let's see here. We want the NES scene. We're not playing Eye of the Beholder two. I need to open Notepad plus plus. It's going to be a real slow stream today, folks. A D one zero one 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 two. Game name. There we go. Game name is Dragon Warrior. We're gonna be real slow, real, just real laid back today. I did. I did ten elements. I uh, I got to the end, beat the final boss. One of my characters died, but um, but that's fine. That's fine. We got a jump scare from Creepy Kelvin. Something's wrong here. Oh, I don't have the fucking... I don't have the thing running. 
vision or no signal. Uh oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Vision four, why do you have no signal? Oh, because it's not Vision 4 anymore. Duh. Eh. Did I mention that I went through... This is going to happen a lot, folks. This is going to happen many, many times. It's going to happen... at least a dozen times. I'm going to forget that I moved the, the connections around. It's on two now. We need 2048 by 250. Where's my numbers? Where's my numbers? Well, that's John Pertwee's Doctor Who. There's, um... Uh, NES 256. 2048 by 250. Now, why is this not showing it? Because this is on the wrong video. There we go. There we go. Look at that. There we go. Crisp and clean. Ready for Dragon Warrior. And we can turn off this other music. D Block Devil World Donald Duck. Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior USA. Dragon Warrior USA sounds like a very, um, sounds like a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, like a 2007 Cartoon Network original. Anyway, here we go. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, that's another that's another good uh, thing it could be. Dad? I'm glad thou hast returned. All our hopes are riding on thee. Before reaching thy next level of experience, thou must gain 777 points. See me again when thy level has increased. Goodbye now, Dad. Take care, and tempt not the fates. Yeah, lucky level. Good luck, Dad. Hey, Iron Zoltan, how's it going? Hey, Shaman 16x as well. Oh, hey, we got a. I didn't even see that. Pearly Gates redeemed. Look at a magazine. We gotta get the um. We get the Munsters theme, uh, town thing going on first, and then we're gonna look at a magazine, which is good because I also forgot. I also forgot to um, load the timer. Forgot to load the timer. Let's load the timer. Oh, we're going to look at a doodad as well. Thank you, Cuba. Uh, let's see here. Dragon Warrior. Dragon Warrior. All right. Let's find a magazine. Let's do a Nintendo Power. I think I have some of those that I haven't shown. There's also, you know what? Let's find the Nintendo Power that has Dragon Warrior in it, and we'll actually read the strategy for it. Let's do that. I think that's a good idea.
Okay. Which one of these has... Which one of these has... Maybe let's search for it online. Find it first. Dragon Warrior Nintendo Power. Between May and October 1989. So May through October 1989. May, June, 89. July, August, 89. September, October, 1989. Right. Why do I have two copies of this one? Weird. But does this have Dragon Warrior content? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, do I have November, December? I don't have that <laughs> that issue, oddly enough, so we'll have to go with this one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We've got... Move that. We've got Nintendo Power. Let me turn this music down a little. got Nintendo Power, September, October, 1989, DuckTales, 12 pages of treasure hunting strategy, Game Boy Hits to Go, Batman, preview plus poster, bonus, Super Mario Bros. 2 tip book part 2, and we've got this extremely weird, like, diorama photograph thing here, and then cartoon duck on top of it. Very strange. So, uh, move this out of the way. I think I need to get a thing of rubber feet. I need to replace the feet on. Uh, need to replace the feet on my. Um, advantage, and I need to replace the feet on my acorn. What do we have here? Just got the Nintendo seal of quality, guaranteed hot on the back. Powerful connection here. These kids have a powerful connection. None of them can actually hear what's, well, maybe the middle one can hear what's actually going on on the phone. One girl is like, I can't tell if they're, if she's like holding the cord for some reason. It's 420. 1900 420. And then there's shoes rocketing off into space. Hot tips. Hot tips. Product info and subscriptions has been uh, vandalized into the Nintendo phone booth here. Are there still phone booth, uh, f uh, phone sex lines? I don't assume all those would have died off with uh, the internet. Ah, uh, let's see here. We've got, we've got some stuff. We've got DuckTales. We've got Dragon Warrior. We've got Hoops. We've got Fester's Quest. We've got Roger Rabbit. We've got the NES Satellite, the Game Boy. It's like vinyl. <laughs> I don't go to pornography websites. How disgusting. I'm a connoisseur. <laughs> We've got Counselor's Corner, Classified Information, Howard and Nestor. Over here, in an unreadable yellow, we've got Willow, River City Ransom, Batman, and NES Play Action Football previews. On Packwatch, we've got Shadowgate, a Boy in His Blob, Godzilla, Codename Viper, Tombs and Treasure, Gilligan's Island, Win, Loser, Draw, and Double Dare. <laughs> and uh, 
then we've got the other the other uh, columns players polls top 30 nes achievers nes journal back issues next issue from the editor and players poll oh hey they credit the illustrations and the poster art poster was done by hige hige omori we have here have a birthday jason says Mario. I think it says super in yellow, but it's really hard to read. I I love that alert. Love those alerts. Now you are playing with power. Stock thread. Stock thread. Thank you for eleven months. <laughs> Thank you for eleven months. Now I am playing with power. I'm playing with power. Check this out. Now we we saw this one before, but we're looking at it again because it has Dragon Warrior stuff in it. And we want to look at those in in detail now that we're basically at the end of the game. Mailbox. This is a fun one. I want to read this again because it it stood out to me before. The NES is by far the best product I've ever purchased for my children. Shaman 16X. Rare alert. Saburato. <laughs> Shaman 16X, thank you for four months for Twitch Prime. Folks, if you have Twitch Prime, don't forget. If you have Amazon Prime, don't forget you can link Twitch. I'm sure everyone knows by now, but, you know. Get a, get a free sub. It's, give somebody $2 and get some emotes. <laughs> for free, basically. Um, at the cost of a little bit worse data mining. Um, $17,000 phone bill in 1980s money, no less. So check this out. Fun and durable. The NES is by far the best product I've ever purchased for my children. While being entertaining, I've discovered that it's one of the most durable products being made today. Believe it or not, I drove over my children's NES with our 1984 Cadillac. Needless to say, we were all very upset. After removing the screws in the top of the machine and straightening out the metal frame that protects the circuit board, I was able to slip a game pack in. Much to our amazement, after carefully plugging it in, it worked as perfectly as ever. And still is after two weeks. Thank you for producing such a durable system. All of us appreciate it. In Fargo, North Dakota. When Final Fantasy Legend 1 hit my Game Boy, it almost destroyed it. <laughs> um, anyway. So yeah, this... This story... Um, this story... There's a couple of scenarios here, right? Big follows! Why would I need big follows? 
That's... <laughs> what is their criteria for that? Hey, partner, you want big follows? <laughs> so, so, there's a couple of scenarios here, right? Scenario number one. NES in a place where cars normally are. Scenario two. I think I'm being followed. <laughs> what could they want? King Bronco 87, thank you for the follow. I do appreciate all of the follows. Everyone following. It 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 is it is really nice. I, I do appreciate the support and the following and all that stuff. But you know, why would why would I buy why would I buy like bot accounts that just puts me at risk and doesn't give me anything? <laughs> King Bronco is following me. That is a big follow. So, scenario two. Car is somewhere that Nintendo normally is. Um, get followed by singular giants. Um, scenario number three. It was intentional. Now, I'm guessing... <laughs> uh, so, so, there's three scenarios, right? Scenario one. NES, somewhere that car is supposed to be. Scenario two, car somewhere that NES is supposed to be. Scenario three, intentional, intentional, uh, NES attack, right? <laughs> Which validates what they said. Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Hold on, let's reread this. Let's reread this. Believe it or not, My I drove God, over. That's fantastic. D, thank you for the host. Here's what it says. Let's let's analyze this. Believe it or not, I drove over my children's NES with our 1984 Cadillac. Needless to say, we were all very upset. So, scenario three seems very likely because she doesn't say, I accidentally drove over it. Right? She doesn't say, I accidentally drove over my children's NES. And the statement, to, uh, the statement which says, needless to say, we were all very upset, doesn't indicate, doesn't explicitly call out the fact that their being upset was a result of the NES being run over. Perhaps. Perhaps. She's like, if your kids don't take out the trash, I'm going to run over... I'm going to run God, over your NES. Fantastic. Hey, Chiz, how's it going? Did you find Red October? Or did you find only regular October? Because the second one is way easier to find. Hey, Dr. Goggles. Hey, Sigurbjorn. We're trying to... We're, we're doing some... Uh, we're doing some analysis... Of this story that was sent into uh, that was sent into Nintendo Power here, if it focuses, it doesn't want to focus. Here we go. Here we go. It says, "Believe it or not, I drove over my children's NES with our 1984 Cadillac. Needless to say, we were all very upset." And then they described the process, how they repaired the machine, and it still worked, uh, even two weeks later when they wrote that that letter. <laughs> took it in the backyard and played with it like it was a base. So, so my belief is, they say, believe it or not, I drove over my children's NES with our 1984 Cadillac. No indication that it was an accident. And needless to say, we were all very upset. But they don't indicate that they were upset that the NES was run over. Maybe, perhaps they were already upset and that's the reason that the NES got run over, right? If you kids don't take out the trash, I'm gonna run over your NES. My God, that's fantastic. Coconut, thank you for the host. For the insurance money. Yeah, it happened in Fargo, North Dakota as well, which is funny, but Nintendo says, instead of taking it apart yourself, give their customer service reps a call. 
and say, we hope that your car is still running okay. And we got some, we got some 80s kids hanging out with their CRT that's probably worth like $800 today. And then we have DuckTales. We have Launchpad, Uncle Scrooge, Bubba Duck, Webby, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Piranha Plants. Two Hidden Treasures. Jump to find Hidden Treasure. If you want to get even more treasure. Occasionally, Scrooge will run into Launchpad, the pilot, who will offer him a ride back to the control room. To really build up your score, take him up on his offer, and then play the same stage over again to find even more treasure. Isn't the PC DuckTales like a weird management sim? <laughs> I mean, there's one that is. I don't. I don't remember which one. Um, there's also like a fan game DuckTales maybe on uh, MSX, which is like a. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is that the, it has, oh, okay, okay, it has, like, mini platformer games and stuff. I think that has also a, like, a, like, management sim side meta game or something where you can, like, buy stocks and stuff. I was looking at pictures of it recently. McDuck Enterprises, German, German business empire sim. Yeah, it's like, um, <laughs> hold on a second, I gotta look this up. Maybe look, let's use Google, Google Translate. Uh, we need this German uh, business simulation. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! I can't believe I, I can't. I can't believe I remembered that. <laughs> I did. I I I uh. Yeah. Is it? Is it Enteborg? Geschafft simulation. Duckburg business simulation. It's in Swedish. It's what Ankeborg or something. <laughs> Google Translate says Ente for duck, but that might be that might be like like Crouch, the Amazon, and all these gems and someone. How? <laughs> what do you suppose? What material do you suppose this ice cream is made out of to be intact in this shape in the Amazon? Oh, look at this. Look at this. We gotta see this. Look at the little McDuck doll. It's so good. That drawing of the McDuck doll. Joachim von Anka. Yeah, the McDoll is really good. It's so good. <laughs> I should make that a tier three emote for some reason. <laughs> Gotta scan this to get a, a super high res version that I can then compress down that. <laughs> yeah, BNU, what's um what's Duckburg financial business simulation in Swedish? <laughs> or German. I don't know if you know German that well to do on the spot translations. <laughs> I <laughs> I uh Dagobert Duck. Ooh. Careful cover, let me stay on. I saw this and I saw this picture, and I was like, seems like he might be beyond rescuing if that's what he looks like now. 
<laughs> Rescue Huey. <laughs> he's he's real messed up. He needs a lot of rescuing. <laughs> Ankeborg Finance Simulator. Uh, however you say 1889 in, uh, in Swedish. More cakes and stuff in the African mines. Oh, that's good. This, the, um... My God, that's fantastic. Creatures from the Duck Lagoon. There. A creature from the Duck Lagoon is pretty good. Damn it. Stay open. Okay, now. Get this to focus on the duck. Look at him. Look at that creature from the Duck Lagoon. That's pretty good. There's more than two. Well, I mean, there's, uh, like every variant of GURPS, I'm pretty sure, has that. Oh, this guy's good. King of the Terra Fermis. Magicka Dispel. Not Dispel. Is there... Does it show... It doesn't actually show the boss of Transylvania. Or Amazon. I guess. And here's, uh... Hey, Retro Death Row. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at an old Nintendo Power. We got a, a reward to look at a magazine. And since we're on Dragon Warrior, we picked the uh, the um, Nintendo Power with some Dragon Warrior stuff in it. Yahoo! I won. Says says Scrooge. Very excited. Oh man, Himalayas. See now the ice cream would make sense here. And then uh, Ducktales Moon theme, the Lunar Rat. DuckTales Moon theme, which, uh, I have, um, I have a decent set. I, it's, I think most of the issues from, uh, the first issue through, uh, like, late 89, early 90, I think. Um, I'm missing a couple and I have a duplicate of one. And then, uh... I have like one or two later ones. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Dragon Warrior, step into the legend. The road is long and full of hidden dangers. I also have the Fun Club news. I think the Fun Club news one is complete. Set it. that that uh group of them. They're they're all in kind of rough condition because they're the ones I've had since since I was a kid. This. I think I'm being followed. What could they want from me? Hey, Retro Death Row, thank you for the follow. Yeah, so we have a uh, role playing adventure for the NES. We got a feature on it here. Never before have you experienced this kind of adventure on your NES. Beyond hope and fear, you must conquer implacable foes, solve riddles. As old and as dark as the caves of Alephgard, and dare to face hardship and heartache it would break many a great warrior. In the last issue, you learned about the importance of spells, items, and listening to villagers. Now it is time for you to set out on your grand quests. Indeed, the challenge of a lifetime awaits those brave and adventurous souls who answer the call to restore peace to Alephgard. Beware of dark marshes of poisonous thorns. To cross this channel, you'll need great wisdom. Treasures and terrors dwell in the caves of Alephgard. Not all towns are places of commerce and rest. Bridges are not only are not the only means by which one may cross the sea. Tantagel Castle in the town of Breconary. So they tell you to uh, save to see the king. 
Um, recover HP at the inn. Uh, the text turns orange if your HP is too low. Um, when you first visit Breconary, your supply of gold is slim. Most items are too expensive. For now, buy the items you can afford, and they recommend that you buy the clothes for protection and the club for fighting. Which, apparently, like, that's not the good strategy. You want to, like, skip that stuff, I guess? Do something different? Uh, explore Erdrick's Cave, which is up there northwest of Tantagil. Discover the past. Erdrick was not only a legendary warrior, he was also a great wizard who could glimpse the future. In his tablet, he left important clues to help the hero who would follow. That hero is you. Nice. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Yeah, I'm doing... Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this. This was a, a little thing from, uh, from Nintendo Power, the Gamekeeper. The Gamekeeper booklet. And so... I've started, I started this back in August, and, uh, we played, uh, we played Batman back in August, played all the way through that. The ones in pen, the ratings in pen here are from when I was 10 and had this, and had just rented Batman, and then I put in pencil my ratings for, uh, for 2020, and then, uh, we started on, uh, we started on Dragon Warrior. I've been doing it kind of on and off. You can see here, like, throughout September, uh, throughout the end of August and September. And then haven't rated it yet. Because, uh... Haven't rated it yet because I, uh... Haven't finished it yet. And then once we finish that, we'll move on to the rest of these games. We've got Faxanadu, which is... Hilarious. Uh, funny enough, they misspelled it. Faxandu. We've got uh, Mega Man 2, and I'll see I'll see if I was correct with um, the best weapons to use here. Um, I've got Ninja Gaiden 2, which I'm certain I've never played, but I still was brazen enough to rate. We've got Super Mario 2, Super Mario 3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Tetris, and Zelda 2. Those are the ones that they included, but they also included blank pages... So you could fill in your own games. So I filled in Final Fantasy back then, right when it was brand new, because I really, I, I, lo I really liked Final Fantasy, and um, I want to finish it. I never finished Final Fantasy one, so I want to finish that. And then there's there's um, nine more blank pages here um, to to fill out. So I want to fill those out after we finish the games that were included, finish Final Fantasy, and then continue filling those out. And then I've been so excited about this. I want to start doing this kind of thing, like set this up uh, for other systems as well. Um, I started preliminary work on like figuring out how you would assess which games would be included. Because this isn't just a like best of. This isn't like, you know, top 10 most popular games as of... 1990. There were certain like marketing ideas behind this booklet. And so I want to kind of recreate that idea of like if it wasn't Nintendo doing it, if it was say it was Sega doing it and they were doing it for the Genesis, when would they do it for the Genesis? Would they do it during the like initial um, group of arcade ports? Would they do it a little later on? Would they do it towards the end of life? And we kind of we went over that. I have a um, a vod of that stream because I did that all on stream, just figuring out, kind of brainstorming uh, that idea. And we came up with a list uh, for Genesis. Um, but uh, I think it would be really cool to like get because there's a lot of people in retro who have like subject matter expert level knowledge of a lot of these things, and I think it would be really cool to. Um, yeah, exactly. And so it's... So the idea is that it's like... It comes with 10. And the 10 that it comes with are based on like... A, a specific point in the, the console's popularity. 
and then it comes with 10 blank pages for you to fill out. And then, of course, there's a template for you to even to add more. But the same idea is that you rate them on um, graphics, challenge, fun, play control, whether the game overall is is uh, is um, lame or awesome. Yeah, play control. Play control is one of the one of the ratings. The one thing I would probably add to this is sound. Graphics, sound, challenge, fun, and play control. Because it's possible for a game to be fun and not challenging, right? A lot of people say that of uh, Symphony of the Night. I, I have a different opinion of Symphony of the Night, but... <laughs> um, I think it's a good challenge when you first play it, if you play it blind. And then it's it's fun to play around with. Al Anonymous. <laughs> Al Anonymous, thank you for three months. <laughs> Isn't that good? You should play that someday. You should play that someday. Um, Grim Blood on Amiga. <laughs> That's true, Al. You are fun and 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 not challenging. And I mean those both as positive qualities. Like, <laughs> you know, you you ever you ever have like that friend who's like, they're fun to be around, but it's like, it is kind of challenging that you're like, they're very energetic and you know kind of a lot to to deal with. And then there's people who are like, super chill and like also fun. So it's like, I I, I think you fit that description, Al, in in the most positive interpretation of it. But yeah, this is this is the Nintendo GameKeeper. I want to fill this out and like uh, start looking at this for uh, for other systems. Where's that? Hold on, I got it. Where? This is a kind of um, uh, distracted stream. I'm not really super focused. But yeah, here we go. This is the list. Um, this is the list we came up with for uh, Genesis. Based on like a a, a uh, an area of like late enough to include certain like premier titles that they were that were like heavily advertised, but like early enough that it includes the like biggest hit because that's kind of like what this was right with with um teenage mutant ninja turtles ninja gaiden 2 and dragon warrior in here but also like super mario 3 which was by the point this was out that uh, super mario 3 was like nine months old or something but here's the list that we came up with for uh for genesis nhl 94 um as opposed to nfl as opposed to NFL, there was a couple of reasons for that. But um, Sonic 2, Streets of Rage 2, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Aladdin, Bubsy, Jurassic Park, Shining Force, Flashback, The Quest for Identity, and Echo the Dolphin. And it's not just the greatest hits, right? Like, some of these games turned out to be flops, but they were like... The games that were being pushed really heavily at the time. Some of them were um, popular third-party titles. Uh, some of them were first-party titles. And, like, uh, they were of varying quality, but also, like, a exactly. That's exactly it. It's a good snapshot of the era, but it's a snapshot of the era from the perspective of what was being heavily marketed, not what was... In retrospect, the best games, and that's I think the one of the key key parts of it. <laughs> Bubsy, the original Bubsy is not bad. That's like I don't know, top forty percent of uh, of platformers on the respective systems it came out on. There's there's far far worse games it's it's a little bland and like 
Uh, it's a little bland, and, like, the character isn't that well-defined other than 90s, like, <laughs> 90s tood. It's fine. It's fine. A lot of the, like, super Migi games are, are borderline unplayable <laughs> on, the, on the Genesis. Yeah, it's a meme to hate Bubsy. Like, Bubsy's fine. Bubsy 3D, on the other hand, is, like, so close to being a really groundbreaking game, but they just, they fucked it in a couple of ways that could be fixed, that probably could be fixed by a hack. And yet, no one will. Ah, where are we? North Aleph Guard. North Aleph Guard. We got some cool, uh... We got some cool... <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> Look at these slime faces. Look at these slime faces. Look at the faces on these enemies. <laughs> the bottom one, the red slime, is just boo. That's true. The ghost... Although he's laughing at you, if you attack when you're strong, the last laugh is yours. Drakey. Like a baby dragon, Drakey's can fly. Use the hurt spell or fight it with the club. Look at these fucking awesome illustrations. They're so cool. Such cool illustrations. Don't give up, skeleton. The skeleton does not give up easily. Hmm. I know, right? Imagine if they did a remake. Imagine if they did a remake of Dragon Warrior with all of this art in it. <laughs> and, like, made the map actually look like the drawings of it and stuff. That'd be pretty... That'd be pretty interesting. Welcome back, Cuba. Here we go. Raise your level by fighting! Once you have earned enough experience points in battle, your level will go up. It's a good time to save your game. Your strength, agility, attack, and defense power increase as your level rises. It'll be a long time before you can defeat a dragon... Only experienced heroes can face this. Check this out. Check this out. This is like... This is like a mobile game ad. Only experienced heroes can face this. <laughs> but it's like... It's like, here's the ad. Here's what the game looks like. <laughs> Learn a spell at level three. Learn hurt. Unlock the secrets. <laughs> and strategies. Let's let's get some strategies going on here. Strategy tips for levels one to five. Uh, the greatest heroes of old always kept in mind the necessity of caution. They knew that the quickest uh, method to build up gold and experience was to take one step at a time. It's still good advice. If you wander away from the relative safety of the plains that surround Tantagil Castle and Breconary, uh, when your strength is still low, chances are you won't get very far. Let patience be your guiding word. Then, once you've reached a higher level, you will be able to push further into the unknown lands. Levels 1 and 2. Your first and greatest need is for experience. Only by defeating many slimes and red slimes will you gain the experience points necessary to increase your level. And, at the same time, you will collect much gold. Level 3. Having learned the spell of heal, you can now attack more dangerous creatures. When wounded, simply chant the spell and heal yourself. Then resume the battle. At this stage, you'll want to begin exploring further north and west toward Garenham. Level 4. By the time you have reached level 4, You've probably visited much of North Alephgard. Turn now to the east in the town of Cole, where new mysteries and wonders await you in the heart of an ancient forest. In uh, level 5, in Cole, 
You'll find magical items for sale. Be sure to buy one of these, then search throughout the town for other hidden secrets. If you need more help, don't despair. The next two issues of Nintendo Power will feature special tip book inserts. Next two issues. I have the one after this. And we've got this... He's having a little... He's having a little camp and the... The skeleton is coming for him. NES Satellite! The power of long distance. These three dudes, four dudes, I mean, these four dudes. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's get the camera to focus on these four dudes having a wonderful time with their NES satellite. The reason I said three, by the way, is because it only shows three at the bottom. The uh, the fourth guy in the picture, fourth guy in the picture up here, got left out. <clears throat> Wireless controllers. Four times the fun. Great new four-play games are rocketing your way. Iron Man, Ivan Stewart's Off-Road, Super Off-Road. Let's see. NES Play Action Football, Ultra, Kings of the Beach, A Nightmare on Elm Street, U.S. Championship, The Ball, Magic Johnson's Fast Break, Oh man, we got hoops. We got hoops with all these wonderful, uh, wonderful characters playing basketball down here. The slam dunk. Mr. Doc's aerial show. Oh man. The names of the characters in this. Uh, Bomber, Wiz, Legs, Jammer, Mr. Doc. Barbie. Face. <laughs> Those are all good. The screenshots are a little too slow, uh, too small to show well, though. Oh, man. Counselor's Corner. Change Mutant Ninja Turtles, how do I get through Section 17 in Area 4? The item is only there to distract you. Stop and drop. How do I defeat the enemies at the end of Areas 4 and 5? Uh, 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 uh. Donatello may be slower to swing than his brothers, but with his bow, he definitely has the ability and strength to defeat the huge Mauser that waits at the end of Stage 4. Make sure that Don gets below his robotic opponent and jabs upward with his bow. In just a few strokes, Don will send Mauser parts flying. The giant tank in Stage 5, Technodrome, is one of Shredder's most devastating mechanical inventions. To disable this beast, you must get to the giant eye and destroy it. Scrolls are the best weapon here to have here, and the machine must be taken on bit by bit. First, go after the force field up front, and then work on the hatch, from uh, which members of the Foot Clan use to enter and exit the tank. The gun turrets should be next on your list. Jump away from their fire and swing or shoot when you have a chance. You'll have a clear shot at the eye here and it will take some trained fighting to beat it. On the Technodrome, it is safe to walk on the tread. Be careful and make sure that you don't fall off and get crushed. Adventures of Link. Where's the hammer? We got four game counselors here. One of them looks a little bit like the uh, the new emote that we're going for at 150 subs. Duke Doe, hello. Uh, where is Castlevania and how do I get there? <laughs> uh, 
Where is Castlevania and how do I get there? <laughs> I like that. Metroid, how do I get over the wide gap and tall pipe in Ridley's hideout? How do I get through section 10-3? Adventures of Lolo. Better it's just to save the receipt. Fester's Quest. Oh, man. <laughs> That's like a hype train right there. <laughs> the Fester's Quest hype train. <laughs> that would be good. That would be very good. Fester's Quest. That is a good. That is a good pog face. You don't have to use the the actual pog face. Oh, look what they've done in the top uh, in the top there, the top right of the screen, the sub screen, the illustrations of the different monsters. Somebody knew what they were doing with this layout. Just using that face everywhere. <laughs> They're like, yes, this is the face. Oh, man. Oh, I forgot the bosses have really good names, right? McWimpy. Once you beat McWimpy, you can't go back. Once you beat McWimpy, you can't go back. Life advice, folks. Life advice. We've got Zybar and Mr. Thunderblade. Mutilator Troy. Mutilator Troy and T-Rex. Get another health meter box by walking through the woods. Maze-like UFO. Oh boy, another great game. Who framed Roger Rabbit? R.J. Maroon has been murdered. All evidence points to the famous movie star tune, Roger Rabbit. I know Roger is innocent and Maroon's will can prove it, but the pieces are hidden in four places. Have to find the four pieces and clear Roger. Should search and collect lots of items and information from around the city. Got a tip to search the outskirts of town, but have to watch out for the snakes and other animals who will try to stop us. Spring shoes, cigar, portable hole, crowbar. Start your search in Tinseltown. Who framed Roger Rabbit, by the way, based on a, uh, based on a true story. Based on a true story, part of a trilogy, in fact. Who waits in Toontown? Oh man. Game Boy, compact video game system. Game Boy, what is it? Portable and powerful, this is the innovative new game system that will travel anywhere. Game Boy's detailed graphics, super stereo sound, and compact game packs make it a perfect package for play on the go. The Game Boy com uh, system comes complete with stereo headphones, a video link cable, and a great new version of the Soviet strategy game, Tetris. A block maneuvering puzzle solver that everyone is talking about. Game Boy games will have all of the detail, depth, and dimension of NES games condensed to a size that will go anywhere you want to go. An optional rechargeable battery pack slash AC adapter guarantees that gameplay will continue for a long time. And we have some games, Tetris Tennis. Super Mario Land Baseball Alleyway, which is uh, Arkanoid, basically. And here's Howard and Nestor playing the Game Boy on the beach. A link with the Soviet Union! Yeah, Game Boy Tetris. Oh no, this is the one with <laughs> Nestor's mom. 
Nestor's mom confiscates confiscates his Game Boy and and plays games on it. Yeah, Nestor fails at Tetris. This looks easy, says my mom. Don't you have other things to do? Not now, Nestor. And then uh, Howard Phillips, professional video gamesman, defeats a child at uh, Game Boy. Oh man, previews Willow, River City Ransom, Batman, and play action football. Willow, look at this. A map of the Willow world. Don't just carry items, use them. Capcom's new fantasy game. We got a map of the village, we got different magic. River City Ransom. The strength in numbers, but two is all you need. You are what you eat. Knowledge is the key to survival. These boys are armed to the teeth. When you want info, you talk to the man. The legendary Caped Crusader is now on your NES. And we have... We have fake cutscenes here. This was done with the font from the game. Look at those in-game graphics. Fantastic in-game in graphics there. Look at that. And then we've got this scene where Batman provokes a ruffian. And then some actual in-game graphics. But yeah, Batman, we played that before on the GameKeeper stream. A pretty good game. It's difficult to control, though. It's fun, but it's difficult to control. Oh man, play action football. Some, like, detailed illustrations of football players. Here, they're, uh... They're playing a friendly match of football in uh, in an autumn forest. <laughs> somehow, so somehow. Football. Oh, classified information. Classified information here. In 1943, custom-made code. Our code crackers have been working long hours to discover the secret of the 1943 password. And it's like. Here's how to get a password for 1943. Uh, what weapon? How much energy? Offense? Defense? Or no, offense, defense, weapon, energy. Time limit. Uh, points, minimum stage. And then other stage there. Ninja Gaiden. Preserve power points. According to our ninja specialist, the jump and slash is the weapon to have, especially when going after the enemies at the end of a stage. While making use of this powerful item, Ryu can be invincible in the air. The drawback is that it requires five power points to use. Even if Ryu just wants to break a lamp for a hidden item behind it, Agent 68 has found that the jump and slash will not be activated if you press and hold the down arrow on the control pad while Ryu is in the air, and you press the B button so that he will swing his sword. This way, you will be able to save the power points to jump and slash more imposing targets. Up and over. Here we go. The famous method. Up and over. How to get past this part on the famous Ninja Gaiden stage. Uh, Star Soldier. Instant offense. Mega Man 2. Hold the mustard. Patience pays and don't stop now. Guardian Legend, 
Tune Test. Adventure of Link. Monster Maneuver. Ah, yeah, it's like... How to Avoid Fixed Encounters on the World Map by uh, running into a wandering monster at the same time you step on the tile for the uh, fixed encounter, which is usually longer and more difficult. Tecmo Bowl, Mirror Image. Legacy of the Wizard, Triple Threat, Music Lesson, Free Armor, and Bonus Players. So here we have uh, Mega Man 2, Howard versus Nestor, where Nestor shows up as Mega Man, and uh, when uh, It's like a, um, it's like a, the first to miss three questions would lose the match. They have to, they have to guess questions about, uh, about something. But then, um, Nestor asks, how do you get out of this place? And, and Howard, the robot Howard, just explodes. No. He he uh, he loses. So then uh, it turns out it was all just a, a horrible dream that Howard had. We've got Air Fortress, Sky Shark, Casino Kid, Castle Quest, Jordan versus Bird, one on one, Bad Street Brawler. At the end of each stage, Duke tosses recovered bonus items in the trash can. Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and we got the top 30. Zelda 2, Super Mario 2, Ninja Gaiden, Zelda 1, Blaster Master, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, Legacy of the Wizard, Bionic Commando, Guardian Legend, Metroid. Rounding out the top 30. Tecmo Bowl, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 1, Track and Field 2, Hudson's Adventure Island, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, uh, Contra, Metal Gear, uh, Super Mario 3 in its debut. I don't think it was out yet at this point. Or maybe it was. Maybe it was. Um, Adventures of Lolo, Bases Loaded, Double Dragon, Milton's Secret Castle, Blades of Steel, Ultima, Super Mario Brothers, Castlevania, Bad Dudes, Double Dribble. Players Forum. We got the, the sweaty, vibrating dealers, players, and pros here. This guy caught a big fish. A shark, I guess. Pack Watch, a look into the future of NES game packs. This is my favorite part. Shadowgate. Shadowgate. Wonderful game. Uh, let's see. Bases Loaded 2. Gilligan's Island. Codename Viper. And Tombs and Treasure. Godzilla, a boy in his blob with an extremely, extremely disturbing looking blob there. Look <laughs> at this blob. Ooh. Look how happy he is. Look how happy that blob is. Vacuuming up those jelly beans. Oh man, we got Susie. Susie is here. What's happening in the world of Game Boy? Gridiron Gladiators, Castlevania The Adventure Continues, Motocross Maniacs, Bugs Bunny, Shanghai, and Lock and Chase. And then we got we got Susie, one of the favorite Nintendo characters. Susie, there's Susie. 
There she is. Dizzy's <laughs> great. And then we've got uh, this list over here. What do we got? What do we got over here on the big on the big long list? We've got Captain Skyhawk, Cabal, and Time Lords. We've got Wild Boys. We'll give you fair warning when Bandai is ready to cut loose Wild Boys. This one is a karate action game that lets you change places among four different characters when one's energy gets low. Oh man. It take a lot of it would take a uh, a lot of cleanup to make that image into thing, but here we go. Here's our here's our screenshot of uh, Wild Boys. Only known screenshot of the game. Baseball Simulator 9000 and the magic of Shahrazad. Shahrazad. Web World and Urban Convoy. Demon Sword. Everett and Lendl Top Players Tennis. <laughs> yeah, Wild Boys. One of the famous fake games for the, for the NES. The NES Planner. Let's see here. October. Air Fortress. Black Base. Casino Kid, Castle Quest, Guerrilla War, Roger Rabbit, Sky Shark. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> they reduced it by the by um, eight ninths. Uh, November, Back to the Future, Ducktales, Fester's Quest, Goal, Jeopardy Junior, King's Knight, NFL Football, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Sesame Street A B C, Stealth Eagle, Three Stooges, Thundercade. Twin Eagle, Wheel of Fortune Jr. Thundercade, as famously rated higher than Guardian Legend by, uh, by EGM in issue number three. December, NES Play Action Football, Short Order, Explode, and Robocop. Future, A Boy and His Blob, All Pro Basketball, Archon, A-R-C-O-N. I don't know if that's Archon, the, the chess game. Uh, Bases Loaded 2, Batman, The Battle of Olympus, Chessmaster, Clash at Demon Head, Cybernoid, Dig Dug 2, Genghis Khan, Eight Eyes, Iron Sword, Infiltrator, King of the Beach, Marvel's X-Men, Puss in Boots, Rescue the Embassy Mission, River City Ransom, Road Blasters, Rock and Roll, 720, Shadowgate, Super Off-Road, Tenth Frame, Top Players Tennis, Twin Cobra, and Willow. We have NES Achievers. NES Achievers. Bunch of people. Um, score leeching in Bomberman, Indiana Jones, presumably. Maxed out score in Mega Man. Um, track and field maxed out scores. Maxed out scores in Wizards and Warriors. Uh, maxed out scores in Xenophobe. One person submitting a Xevious score. Oh man, NES Journal, Captain N, the Game Master. Duke. Mega Man, Mother Brain. That's a good Mega Man. That's what Mega Man looks like. That's what Mega Man looks like. <laughs> he looks like an old baby. Where is this in focus? Yeah, there's Mega Man. We got Captain N. And we've got uh, Princess Lana. And then Mother Brain. The face there. Good face. 
on Mother Brain. Yeah, Brain Lord. Mother Brain Lord. And we've got uh, Brian Robbins. Totally cool. Eric of Head of the Class makes the grade with Nintendo. Othello link up. 10th annual Othello International Tournament in Warsaw, Poland. The NES cleaning kit. It's sensational summer CES. We got the the power glove. The giant Game Boy. Back issues. We got back issues here. Back issues now available. And we've got uh, Robocop 2 Players Poll Contest. Meet Robocop in person. Witness hair raising action stunts. Tor Houston. Hey, Paskey, how's it going? Uh, we're, only, we're only an hour long. <laughs> we're only an hour long. We just finished the magazine. We had to get tips. Ask you, we had to get tips on, on what to do in uh, in Dragon Warrior. Her, hold, hold on, let me see what it says. It says to level up. Raise your level by fighting. It had good tips. <laughs> and we haven't got to the doodad yet. Yeah, we got one we got one we got one stacked up. <laughs> we got one stacked up. But uh, there you go. There's a magazine. I'm taking it easy today. I'm going slow at stuff, so. Um, September, October, 1989, Nintendo Power. It's a good, it's a good mag. It's a good, it's a pretty good one. We got, um, there's a good, good fake game in here, too. Uh, the, the, the one known screenshot of, uh, of Wild Boys. Famous, <laughs> famous vaporware. We got it right there. It's just like some dude getting hit. <laughs> oh, like the Fun Club News stuff? Yeah, I got a few of those. I, I think I, I might actually have all of them. There's only like six or seven, something like that, before they switch to the Nintendo Power format. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Oh, it's back. It got back in focus. I've, I've got that. Hold on one second. The Nintendo Player's Guide. I had this one. The, the official Nintendo Player's Guide. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this one. Yeah, it's got like all the maps for Commando, and like, wow, that's that's Commando, Ghosts and Goblins. It's got. Does it have a map for Ghosts and Goblins, or does it just have um, an in-depth review and playing tips? You know, it has like all the enemies and what they do, what all the items do. Fucking all the the maps for uh, Zelda Two, shit like that. Yeah, and they're all hand drawn. All the maps and stuff in this are hand drawn, which is is fucking cool. I guess we're doing this for the doodad. <laughs> this is the doodad. It's a it's a big doodad though, so. And yeah, the color guide. We <laughs> get the color guide for the, the NES games. Adventure series, programmable series, action series, arcade series, sports series, robot series, light gun series, and educational series. Yeah. <laughs> In-depth game reviews. Legend of Zelda. Looks like basic stuff. Fight with the sword and shield. Beware of, be aware of Link's house. Gather the Triforce. What all the different items are. Different enemies. Pole's voice. Like, like. Lanmola. <laughs> This is how I knew any of the fucking names of the enemies is from stuff like this. A lot of games. They got the overworld map. 
the different maze layouts. Punch out all the strategies for the different characters. Winning strategy for Tiger's magic punches. And they always cut off like halfway through or a little, little uh, after halfway through. Oh man, Commando, all this, like secrets, how to deal with all the different enemies, what the different uh, power-ups meant, grenade power-ups, infinite grenades. You rescue the hostage from the underground shelter. Your grenades are unlimited. Machine gun power-up. And then all these, look at the, like, look at the detail in these maps. How they, like, they, like, drew all the stuff in. Because, like, getting a, you know, getting a video and stitching together screenshots was, like, more involved and expensive than hiring an artist to actually just draw it out. <laughs> just thought that was kind of funny. Super Mario Brothers. All the different stuff. Enemy characters, Buzzy Beetle, Fire Bar, Cheap Cheap Blooper, Potaboo, King Bowser the Great, Playing Tips. <laughs> these sound like these sound like poorly like like extremely literally translated special moves from some like fighting anime. Playing Tips number one. Continuous destruction method. Number two, simultaneous killing method. Number three, kicking method. <laughs> you yell that out when you <laughs> when you when you perform them. Oh, we've got we've got little maps of uh, little maps of the Super Mario stages with all the like detail. And like what's in each of the blocks. Little keys of what's in every block. It'd be really good to study if you were doing a like deathless or or speed runs. I think my original copy of this kind of disappeared somewhere. I got this one for two dollars somewhere after the fact. I had this for a long time though. Ghosts and goblins! Torch one, uh, spear, torch one, torch two, sword, axe, cross. Arthur, princess, Lucifer. A hey, lawn dog, yeah. The player's guide, ravens, zombie, red devil, green monster, flying knights, unicorn, forest ghost, petite devils, blue demon, bat, dragon, tower monster, big men, Uh, skeleton, Satan, Armor, Yashishi, Frog King. If you get the Frog King, Arthur will turn into a frog. Leaping Lizards, the Magician, Extend, Key, yeah, Stage 1, Stage 2, Stage 3, Entrance to the Magic Castle. You can't get into the magic castle unless a licensed magician invites you. Uh, stage six, the head of the underworld, Lucifer's chamber. Secret points. Oh man, Top Gun. Fighters, warning aircraft, aircraft carrier, rocket system, attack copters, submarines, battle cruiser, tanks. I'm gonna do the different combat levels. Double dribble. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I forgot the fucking stupid teams in double dribble. And their mascots. The Boston Frogs. <laughs> Chicago Ox. 
Los Angeles Breakers. <laughs> and the like, the fucking black and white dunk shots and trophies and shit. Is it like? They they were trying real hard to make these games like really engaging. Hand drawn map for uh, Legend of Zelda Two. Super Frog! Yeah. We got the maps of the palaces. And all this shit. Should maybe pull these out if, uh... I get stuck in any of these games. Seattle Snakes. The Boston Frog. Right, it's... Does it say singular or, or plural? Boston Frogs. Oh man, Metroid. These are the ten items. These are the ten items. Round ball, long beam, ice beam, bomb, high jump, varia, wave beam, screw attack, energy tank, and missile. No, I'm sure it was just, uh, I'm sure the hand-drawn stuff was... Number six will shock you. Uh, I'm sure it was just a matter of uh, cost. It was it was more efficient to give somebody like to to have somebody draw the maps out than it was to like try to stitch screenshots together or something like that. Oh man, the Metroid characters: Zoomer, Scree, Rio, Ripper, Waver, Giga, Zeb, Sidehopper, Zila, Nova, Squeeped. Geruta, Multi Viola, Holtz, Des Giga, Rinka, Metroid, Zebatite, Craid, Ridley, and Mother Brain. What a cast of characters there. And like all of these maps, the it's unfortunate the like Like, I can't show the, the detail they put in these teensy drawings of, like, where every single block is. <laughs> but they did. Oh, man. Playing tips. All these different points. Metroids will draw out your energy. If you happen to get caught by a Metroid, use the round ball and bomb technique or go through the nearest door to free yourself. Rad racer. They actually have a like diagram of a racing line here. <laughs> Touch and turn strategy. Try to hit other cars from behind, then use the collision rebound to make split second turns. This would be really dangerous if these were real cars. Man. Sunset Coastline, Frisco Highway, Grand Canyon, The Ruins of Athens, LA Nightway, the Snow White Line. The Snow White Line sounds like a reference to something else. Um, courses 7 and 8 are not shown. Oh man, Ring King. Ring King is like sanctioned uh, Kageki. To me, for some reason. I don't know how to play it, though. I have no idea how to play Ring King. I rented it, like, twice or three times and just could never do it. Radius. Fans, Rugger, Die01, Zab, Rash, Jumper, Amoeba, Dacker. This anti-aircraft attack robot attacks with a deadly beam. Need more Dacker. Kid Icarus. Hell yeah, we got the cast of characters for Kid Icarus as well. And all the items. Mono Eye, Nettler, Minos, Girin, Kobil, Specknose, Mukgu, 
Ganymede, Mick, Snowman, Reaper and Reapets, Eggplant Wizard, Octos, Rockman, Charon, Tamambo. I always thought, uh, I always thought Mick here. I always thought Mick was a reference to uh, Mick Jagger. Because it's just a, a, like, giant mouth. And Mick Jagger was always depicted in, like, uh, in, like, um, caricatures with, like, just a gigantic mouth. We've got area one and two, area three of the first stage. The underworld map. These maps, the Kid Icarus map specifically, are, like, so helpful. <laughs> so helpful. The fucking, the fucking fortress maps. I remember using this to beat the game. <laughs> I used those. I used those. And then I made my own maps of uh, fortresses, I think. Right? Because there's one more fortress after this. Oh, man. Pro wrestling. We got the, the hammer throw, the body slam, the punch, the rolling butt. The Lariat, the Backdrop, Pile Driver, Brain Buster, Flying Body Attack, Flying Knee Drop, Plunger, Jumping Knee Butt, and Fighter Hayabusa gets the Back Brain Kick, Starman gets the Somersault Kick and the Flying Cross Chop, Kincorn, Ca Kincorn Can, it's the Mongolian Chop and the Karate Kick. The Amazon with a piranha bite and the outlaw choke. A giant panther with the iron claw and the headbutt. And King Slender with a backbreaker. Oh man, and then you get the you get the screenshot of the mysterious great Puma, the final boss of the game. The double the double title match. Castlevania! Oh, man. Does it actually map out Castlevania? But yeah, there we go. There's the cast of characters. Red and blue bats. Black leopard. Small Medusa. Red skeleton. This is the skeleton which sneaks up on you. When you strike him with your whip, he dies. But after a certain period of time, he revives. Firebomb. They don't call it holy water, they call it firebomb. They call the whip power up of the morning star. We got them. We got the maps. We got the maps. I'm like, check this shit out. Check out this fucking map. Like the fact that the fact that somebody drew this like detailed interpretation of Castlevania's first stage. It's so fucking cool. Do we have um block one, block two? Yeah, we've got these maps. These little. Like detailed, drawn maps, hand-drawn maps for every stage they cover. The whole thing up to mummy fight. That's it. We've got excite bike, arkanoid. Russian attack. Foot soldiers, karate soldiers, pistol soldiers, machine gun soldiers, artillery men, paratroopers. You get bazooka, grenade, pistol, or lucky star. I 
And then we've got, oh, look at this. They even, they even drew maps of the, uh, the Russian attack stages. Which I find kind of funny. Because it's like, they don't indicate where all the enemies are in these or anything, so it's like, <laughs> not very useful. Oh man, Donkey Kong playing tips. Rygar. They actually explain what, uh, what attack and assail does. They call it the disc armor already. Disc armor. Oh man, this has really good, this has really good, uh, really good uh, character names. We gotta see this. Pragokilis, Rolfer, Falorakos, Olbis, Molgolin, Kinitarnos, Epolkon, Bargan, Kinobel, Hyoking, German, Amolum, Sun Yogi, Eruga, Sagila, Belzar, Drago, Kuzilar, Demoro Bruiser, Death Pigar, and Ligar, King of Beasts. The hero, the warrior hero, Rygar. It always confused me that Hermits and Endora looked, uh, looked kind of the same. <laughs> yeah, the Hermits are just like a buff old dude sitting on a pedestal. Gigantic buff old dude. And then the Endora has, uh, the, like, eye on his forehead and a bigger brain. Oh man, Rygar maps, look at this. We got Rygar maps. We got the map of the overworld. And then, like, with the overworld, you can just fucking go out of bounds pretty much anywhere. <laughs> There's a couple places. You can just go right out of bounds and do whatever you want. You can go anywhere. Um, except sometimes you'll just fall in the water. <laughs> you'll you'll jump onto a screen and it'll be all water. Or you can get into a crazy mirror world where, like, fucking nothing is sane. <laughs> Man, we got this fucking shit. A complete map of Ligar's castle. There's all kinds of stuff, yeah. It there's my, one of my favorites is if you hold a uh, push in a direct, you jump, push in a direction, and hold a diagonal uh, while attacking in the overworld, and like your disc armor goes out, but the chain is facing perpendicular to your character. And it's like all all corrupted. <laughs> Spy Hunter. The world of Spy Hunter, folks. It's it's just these. And then I think the middle one. I think the middle one goes to uh <laughs> goes to the river. And then the river, I don't know. <laughs> Back to the boathouse. Smoke screens, oil, and missiles. The enemies are tire slashers, bulletproof bullies, limousine, speed boats, cruise boats, and helicopters. Oh man, the Goonies too. With this, with this wonderful, with this wonderful art of the mermaid, whom you will be rescuing. And then art of all the items, which is cool. And drawn art of all the items. These might be from the manual, I think. Do we get do we get a uh Do we get a map of Goonies 2? Yes! Wait, are these? I can't tell if these are these have gotta be screenshots. This one's actually a screenshot map. Check this out. They just like shrunk down photographs of the screens for this one. You can tell on the bridge sections. 
But this one, they actually did like shots of all the screens. It's kind of interesting. And K. Big Raid. Yeah, we're looking at the official Nintendo Player's Guide. Slugbone enters. And how did War of the Dead go? I caught a little bit of it. I peeked in. Thank you for the raid, Anne. <laughs> the dead are dying. The dead are losing the war. Nice. That translation seems to be working out really well, right? The, like, translation thing. Hey, Steelnet. Hey, another Nomen. Reddit Karuga Dasyati. Handroid has a redeemed look at a real software, which we'll do once we're finished with this doodad that we're looking at. We're already deep in doodad time. Yeah, they're giving they're giving tips and maps to the Goonies dungeons. And then Route chart map, front stage, backstage. This confused the hell out of me as a kid. A cam lone wolf, lone mouse wolf. Look at this. Front stage, backstage, and you can kind of see it. It's probably hard to see on, uh... It's probably so hard to see, but look at the fucking, the linking between the different stages. Look at that. <laughs> Complicated game. <laughs> it does kind of look like like a like a dude with a gigantic nose throwing a fireball. Or maybe he's got just like hammer pants. <laughs> yeah, I've I've thought about that. I've thought about that. I should have more uh opportunity to um to do more variety, a bigger variety of streams now as well. We might do like in-depth stuff on certain games that I know well, uh, that kind of stuff. Little Athena, 2,500 points. And then yeah, all the different, all the different power-ups. Uh, I don't watch very much. I don't watch very much video content on uh, on YouTube. Still, that I don't. I haven't heard of that one. I only know like. The stuff that gets mentioned by other people. Oh man, we got all the enemies here. Whoa. And all the enemies. Diving soldier, clone man, robot soldier, spider, bees, macho man, drum barrel soldier, and all the vehicles and emplacements here. Oh. Then we've got more of these hand-drawn maps. Hand-drawn Akari Warriors maps. With notes on like where everything is and where you can get all the power-ups. They're like there's these hand-drawn representations of the stages. It's so cool to me. It's so cool to me. What do we got in here? We'll go a little quicker. We do want to get back to the game eventually. <laughs> and we've got a, a real software piled up on top of this one, too. Kung Fu! Kung Fu, what a game. What a game. Also known as what? Spartan X, I think? The Gripper! Knife Thrower! Tom Tom! Dragon Balls! Dragons! Snake Basket! Snakes! Confetti Ball and Poisonous Moths! I wonder if they, if they talk about the bosses. Yeah, here we go. The bosses. First floor, stick fighter. Second floor, boomerang fighter. Third floor, strong man. Fourth floor, magician. Fifth floor, Mr. X. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no hand-drawn maps for Kung Fu, unfortunately. 
And then we got the game guide. Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Kid Icarus, Zelda 2, Rygar, Deadly Towers, Mighty Quest. A Mighty Quest. Goonies 2, Slime City Kidnap. Now let's see, Legend of Zelda, An Endless Adventure. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, A New Quest for Link. Rygar, Join Forces with the War Gods. Metroid, Galactic Piracy and Heroics. Kid Icarus, A Classic Adventure, Deadly Towers, Mighty Quest. Goonies 2, Slime City Kidnap. Double Dribble, Slam Dunk to Victory. Baseball, It's a Grand Slam. Rad Racer, Power Rally Racing. Golf, Sink That Winning Putt. <laughs> Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, A Mike Tyson Power Punch. Pro Wrestling, Crowd-Pleasing Madness. Soccer, World Cup Excitement. Slalom, Shoosh Boom. Shoosh Boom. Tennis, a smashing hit. Ten-yard fight, a football classic. Volleyball, bump, set, and spike. Winter games, go for the gold. Muscle, tag team match wrestling. Family fun fitness, world of athletics. Stadium events, jump into action. Wasn't stadium events, like, extremely rare or something? Uh, tag Team Wrestling, Mania on the Mat. Karate Champ, The Challenge of Chi Fondu. Ring King, Only the Strong Survive. Side Pocket, Rack em Up. Lunar Pool, Become an Electronic Hustler. Track and Field, Challenge Olympic Competitors. Super Mario Bros. Adventure in the Mushroom Kingdom. Kung Fu, Master the Martial Arts. Pinball, be a pinball wizard. Balloon Fight, Battling Balloons. Ice Climber, a mountain of adventure. Urban Champion, Neighborhood Duke Out. Warning, <laughs> Neighborhood Duke Out. That's what they say when I go outside. Clue Clue Land, an underwater mystery. Star Voyager, Siege of the Moloch War Drivers. That is a fucking cool tagline. <laughs> 3D World Runner, Battle Aliens in 3D, Tiger Heli, the ultimate weapon, Super Pitfall, Endless Caves of Adventure, we got Chubby Cherub, a game of chomp and chase. Ninja Kid, Death on Demon Island. Spelunker, Raiders of the Lost Pyramid. Raid on Bungling Bay, realistic helicraft controls. You got that right. You know what? Helicopters are really difficult to control. So is Raid on Bungling Bay. Bungling Bay, maybe. Bluegling Bay. <laughs> Bluegling. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Commando. Aliens of the Evil Empire. <laughs> Bluegling, yeah. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins, a devil of a fight. 1942, dog fights over the Pacific. Trojan, sword-wielding warrior. Section Z, the mad brain of Balangul. It's got an E in it, in a really weird place, and so I don't know how to pronounce it. Bungling Bay. <laughs> I assume it's pronounced bungling. Bungling Bay. But Mega Man, Trouble in Monsteropolis. Kid Nicky, One Tough Kid. Breakthrough, Assault and Rescue Mission, which it isn't. You're going to steal an aircraft. Karnov, Dragons and Treasure. Dragons and Treasure. Xanak, won against the system. I love how they describe the system in this.
From a mere speck, it grew to become one of the most powerful forces in the universe. It is the system. Created by an organic intelligence body long ago, perished. A malfunction has turned this once benevolent non-life form into a wholesale slaughter machine. The system is down. Ah, uh, Squoon, a Neptunian invasion. Gradius, Gradius, high-tech space warfare. Russian attack, soldiers of misfortune. Castlevania, the vampire strikes back. Stinger, space bandits threaten. Top Gun, be an ace fighter pilot. Jaws, there's no escape. A karate Kid, master of the martial arts. Ikari Warriors, Masters of Destruction. Athena, Adventure Goddess. Alpha Mission, The Warmongers of Tetra Nova. Spy Hunter, Master of the Game. Sky Kid, The Red Baron, Flies Again. Legend of Kage, A Daring Rescue. Arkanoid, It's a Real Blockbuster. Renegade, Thundering Thugs. Mighty Bombjack, a fight for world peace. Solomon's Key, Demons of the Zodiac. Hogan's Alley, join the FBI. Duck Hunt, aim, fire, and score. <laughs> Gumshoe, the five diamonds of Liz. Wild Gunman, gunfight in the Wild West. Gotcha, zap him with paint splots. Excite Bike Revenge at the Motocross. This sounds like a fucking murder mystery. Mock Rider. Attack of the Space Scavengers. The year is 1212. Earth is losing its struggle against ruthless subhuman space scavengers, seeking mastery over every living creature. The only hope for the war torn planet is to locate survivors scattered over the four corners of the globe and organize them into an avenging army. With time running out, only the speed and skill of Mock Rider can reach them before all is lost. As Mock Rider, uh, you are aware of the need for speed. So in a desperate attempt to save the planet, you design your own course of action. One so difficult and fraught with danger that it would sorely test the strength and endurance of even the best of riders. You grip the handles of your cycle and, your face distorting with impelling force, accelerate to top speed. Every hairpin curve of your self-created daredevil course poses increasingly dangerous challenges and an endless army of ruthless villains determined to end your mission. But you are more determined. For Earth must not succumb to the vile space scavengers. Wrecking Crew. A Building Blast, Load Runner, Golden Arches of the Sun, Donkey Kong, the original classic, Mario Bros, the original, Donkey Kong Jr., Save the Big Ape, Popeye, the original Macho Man, Popeye, the original Macho Man, Donkey Kong 3, Bug Man in the Greenhouse, Burger Time, and cla uh, Arcade Classic Ingredients, Elevator Action, Top Secret Excitement, Gyro Might, Gyro Power, Stack Up, High Tech Juggling, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, Play by the Numbers, Coming Attractions, RC Pro-Am, Ice Hockey, Wizards and War Warriors, Wizards and Warriors, come on, come on camera, come on, come on. Wizards and Warriors. Star Force. Ice Hockey. Major League Baseball. TNC Surf Designs. Dragon Warrior. An evil Dragon King has returned from ancient times. You must defeat him with your powerful sword, your armor, and your wits. The fantasy role-playing game is just as challenging as The Legend of Zelda. Return of Donkey Kong. Dragon Power. Victory Road and Contra. Uh, Dragon Power teamed with Goku and Nora. Your mission is to find the dragon's seven crystal balls. With the help of the wind wave and magic pole, you surmount many dangers 
on a mission that takes you from deep inside mountains to a distant city. A list of games by alphabetical order, list of games by manufacturer. Now you're playing with power. Nintendo Entertainment System. Look at that nice layout of stuff there. Look at that nice layout of stuff. The game index by series. There we go. The official Nintendo Player's Guide. A big doodad for today. Now we got other stuff to do. Let me let me check the queue here. We got look at a real software from Handroid. 16 minutes ago. We're we're deep in doodad time now. Let me uh let me take a look here. Let me take a look here what I have for a real software. There. Let me be right back. One moment. So, so, uh, we got a real software here. This has got the, uh, the Monsters theme in part in it, which makes it better. That doo 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 doo. Straight out of the Monsters theme. Uh, Stuck Thread, that is Grim Blood. Yeah, we've got we've got this. Another fantastic Mega Man. Another fantastic Mega Man. Mega Man with his trademark pistol and golden armor. Loose sleeves. Preparing to fight in the city of the future. There we go. There's Mega Man. I always liked the first Mega Man. Well, let me rephrase that. I didn't always like it. <laughs> I thought it was fucking impossible. I thought it was impossible to play at first. But I eventually learned it. I eventually learned it. And, like, the thing that always messed me up was... Um... <laughs> Can you imagine if this is what it... Looked like yeah, Grim Blood on Amiga. You have to run it off disc. It, it's not there's no uh, WHD load or hard drive install for it. Yeah, so here's the thing, right? I used to play Cutman stage first for some reason, and I don't remember why. Um, and so I would play Cutman stage, and it was like it was okay. And then I would play uh I think Alekman stage and then I would do the gut stage I think and the problem was that doing well actually I guess if you do a Lekman stage that way you don't get the the like Mega Man the, the Mega Beam or whatever it is the platform beam and so uh, y you needed um, the guts power to get the uh, beam and so right that was how it was the beam thing was behind a bunch of those blocks so uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up switching my tactic and basically my idea was I'm gonna start on guts man stage because it's the stupidest one and it's like you just die instantly on these things and, uh, so I started playing that stage first, and then I got very good at that stage as a kid. I don't know if I'm good at that stage now, but, um, I got very good at doing that stage as a kid. And so I would, like, um, play Gutsman stage first, 
and then Electman stage, and then I didn't have to worry about uh, pits on any of the other um, on any of the other stages. I could just play them and and use the beam to get over pits, <laughs> and it made the game way more fun. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is my copy that I've had since whenever it was that it came out, like very early, the like early Capcom series stuff. But one of the best. Like, I wasn't a fan of Capcom's arcade ports to the NES, but I loved their original games. And I think that, that to a certain extent, that kind of uh, continues today, so. But, uh, well, I don't know what Capcom's making today. I haven't played recent games of theirs, I don't think. But, um, like, up until their beat-em-up stuff in the arcades, it was like, okay, now the home ports are getting good. Like, um, their Super Nintendo output, I think, was really good. But on the NES, on the NES, I think their, uh, their original stuff was, like, just super, super good, and their arcade ports were, like, not that interesting, not that good, not that engaging to me. Which, which kind of, unfortunately, kind of soured me on a couple of, of arcade games that I'm realizing now are, like, actually kind of interesting. Like, um... Seeing uh, Aquas play, uh, seeing Aquas play um, Commando makes it uh, makes it really interesting to me that it's like, okay, yeah, there's actually cool shit you can do in this game to like, you know, speed run it or, or um, complete it like in terms of like challenge and stuff like that. I think that's really cool and not something that I would have considered with like the NES versions of the game. It's just like. Well, this doesn't really have any, like, to me, it was like, this doesn't really have any meta progression or anything like that. See, NES Strider isn't a port, though. It's it's an original game, and I like NES Strider. I mean, it gets a lot of shit for being all fucked up, but, like, despite its being fucked up, I think it's a really cool game, you know? And, like, the speedrun makes it look... <laughs> it looks... The speedrun makes it look extremely, like extremely fucked and in a way it is but like if you play the game normally it kind of holds together it's kind of like yeah okay it's it just barely hangs on you know but it's got like space like dragon spaceships and fucking teleporters and like sword guys and stuff it's really cool <laughs> yeah i i actually beat it around the time it came out. It took me a couple of years to get to actually beat it, but um, it was just a matter of, like, the, um, the, like, ah, uh, what was I going to say? The, uh, the jump thing? It was like, either I had it or I didn't, and if I didn't have it, I learned to, like, just put the game down and come back to it a week later. It was like, don't try to force playing the game if you can't get that triangle jump early on. <laughs> just just put it down. Because you're not going to get it. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get mad. And then you're going to hate the game. But what you should do is just set it aside, come back another day, and if you get it, then you're good. Batman has its own set of <laughs> of control issues. It has its own set of control issues. But there we go. That's a real software. I've had this one for a very long time. 30-something years? 30-something years on this one? And I'm, I'm certain it still works. But uh, I play all my stuff off flashcards these days because... Don't want to put too much strain on the, uh, on the old NES. Inserting and removing cartridges and that kind of stuff. Oh. But here it is. Wonderful game. Excellent game. I recommend it. A lot of people like Mega Man 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 better. But, uh, I think this is a really great start. It's like the simplest game of the series. And I think that that simplicity kind of carries through in terms of, like, it's a great introduction to the Mega Man games. Um, it's not as flashy. It's not. It doesn't try as hard as the other ones, but I think it 
it does very well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this stuff all has kind of like a, a grunge on it. So I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, I will be back in a few minutes, and then we'll get back to Dragon Warrior. Thank you, everyone, for the redemptions and all this stuff. I always love to look at some stuff, so I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I am back. Let's get to the NES. Full size. This is offset a little bit. Let me uh, let me fix that. should be correct. There we go. 
getting like a million text messages. Get the controller out. Here we go. Now we're ready to quest. Now we're ready to quest. Let's remember to turn the timer back on this time. Here we go. All right. We have 25,000 experience, 33,000 gold. We need 777 lucky level up numbers. We're level 19. We need to be... We need to be quite a bit higher level. That slime ran away. I think we need to gain two levels, right? Is that right? Or did we do the... Did we do the... Grinding stream already? Well, two more levels can't hurt, you know? We're close already at 777. We'll just fight everything in the way. It's probably faster to, like, try to run away from stuff, but... We'll just fight along the way. Hey, Chubo. How's it going? Good to see you, man. Yeah, let's the in, the insane warrior. Hey, Tobor. Tobor. Hey, Rain. Thanks for the beep. Metal slime is in the encounter table for uh, what you call it, right? <laughs> I, I severely reduced the price of beep boops because they're random now. One one good thing. So, I don't know if I mentioned it, folks. I, I, I don't think I mentioned it uh, directly, but um, I only got confirmation today. But uh, I did get laid off from my job, unfortunately. Um, it was a very, very chaotic and confusing process. I got, I got laid off. But that means that um, I will have more time to put into uh, stream stuff. So I'll have a lot more time free to improve the stream. But uh, yeah, 12 hours every day. <laughs> because more time streaming. Streaming is like a regular job where the more time you spend streaming, the more money you make. <laughs> You get paid overtime, time and a half, if you go over an eight-hour stream. <laughs> you have perfect one-to-one -one payments. <laughs> That's how it works. If you stream more than 40 hours in a week, you get uh, benefits as well. Um, I'm gonna certainly, uh, I'm gonna certainly put more time into it. Um, the good news is that. Um, my, my biggest worry, which was that, like, um, yeah, stream more so you get, you get, uh, so that you get heal more. Um. <laughs> Here's your over team at Biff, Phil Schootman. Shadrock, thank you for the hundred bits. Thank you for the overtime pay. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, get the heal more card. <laughs> Fish good, man. <laughs> so, um, anyway, it's, it's not as bad as I thought because I can, I, I am getting a little bit of severance and that makes two of my major expenses I can like I can get rid of two of my major expenses um, 
by the time that runs out. So, um, we, uh, it's, it's, it's less of a like, oh shit, what am I going to do? I need to get a job immediately and, and figure, <laughs> figure things out after that. Um, so I have a little bit of breathing room, but, um, not a great deal, but it's not, it's not the worst thing. You know, it's, it's just a job. <laughs> it's just a job and like... Where's the inn here? Um, you know, there's more jobs out there. Um, hey, you know, if streaming if streaming works out financially in terms of like, um, if streaming works out in terms of the like financial parameters that like I can live and not go into debt or whatever, then I would be I would be totally down to be a full time streamer. But you know, <laughs> it's hard. It's a hard proposition to make work. All right, we got another redemption. We got to look at something else, and we got to look at a complete real software, both from Tobor. Yeah, still the option of becoming a a uh, renowned international jewel thief. We'll pause the timer. We're gonna go to doodad time. I need to think of a. I need to think of a. Something else. And I need to think of a complete real software. <laughs> Trying to redeem everything. Yeah, we had a good we had a good like hour and a half of doodad time at the start of the screen. Start of the stream. The bongo colored gentleman jewel thief. <laughs> All right, let me see here. Oh, I got an idea. I got an idea for something else. That sure would be something else, the, the evolution of dance. Um, here we go. Here's a something else. Here's a something else. Space Ghost and Dino Boy, the complete series. <laughs> Space Ghost and Dino Boy, the complete series. <laughs> We've got the sidekicks and the monkey. Basically the Wonder Twins, I guess. The Universe's Enforcer and the prehistoric Wonder Rocket onto DVD. Dino Boy. Yeah, Dino Boy made the back only. There we go, that's kind of focused. It's a happy caveman. More Hanna-Barbera greats with the Alex Toth touch on DVD. Look for Birdman and the Galaxy Trio. <clears throat> yeah, so this, what do we have? Showcasing the episodes in the three-segment form as they originally aired, these stellar retro hits soar through space and time to deliver justice. First, intergalactic policeman Space Ghost navigates the cosmos with his in his tricked-out spaceship, the Phantom Cruiser, battling villains like Brack and Zorak with his legendary suit and powerful wristbands. Then, Dino Boy teams up with caveman Ugg and dinosaur Bronte to go primeval on the ancient menaces of their primitive home. And finally, Space Ghost flies again with more extraterrestrial adventures and thrilling takedowns. This dynamite compilation also features the dynamic six-part Space Ghost episode, The Council of Doom. It's cosmic entertainment for all. Hey, Discordia Dystopia, how's it going? 
we're we're looking at one of the uh, one of the channel point redemptions here. We're looking at something else. If I can, there we go. There we go. We can get out of here. Gigantic caveman. Gigantic caveman. <laughs> Disc two. Ruler of the rock robots. The bird riders. The challenge. Yeah, cave Conan. And then inside, it's two double-sided DVDs. Two double-sided DVDs. So these are kind of kind of a pain to to get whoa out of their enclosure here because that's not actually a uh, not actually a thing. We've got Space Ghost in the back. We've got Space Ghost in the back. Whoa, these are. Uh, these are what, originally in the 60s? The discs are in good shape. Then you had disc one, side A, side B. Disc two, side A, side B. And the side B is a special feature. It's a feature length profile, Simplicity, the Life and Art of Alex Toth. Yeah, so these are, these are very early uh, cartoons. <laughs> And they have them in the they they're still in the like, um, the original format, which is super weird. It's like one episode, and then it it, it like alternates. It's like Space Ghost, Dino Boy, Space Ghost. Let's see here. doesn't mention the dates of the copyrights or anything like that or when it originally aired. But yeah, they're a while back they released like complete collections of uh they they um released complete collections of like a bunch of the Hanna-Barbera stuff that they were showing on like Boomerang at the time. So it's interesting that like um yeah, you don't get bored of either Space Ghost or Dino Boy. <laughs> but I love this stupid schlocky old cartoon stuff. It's just like it's it's all none of it's serial. It's all like a self-contained episode. They're all pretty short. There's action. I have one Thundar VHS. I do not have the DVD version of it, which I'm a little bit sad about. But um yeah, they don't require a lot of thinking. So it's like, uh... It's like... Um... You can just sit down and you watch it. It's it's dumb stuff. There's action. There's stuff going on. The good guys win. <laughs> when is... When indeed. When indeed. So there's the something else. I think they... Did they... They released some kind of source book for Pirates of Darkwater, but I don't think they did for Thundar. There's a fan Thundar source book, but not, um, but not an official one. Pirates of Darkwater got an official uh, source book, an official RPG source book. It's yeah, it's I I didn't like it when I first saw it because it was like everything seemed like really alien and like super bright colors and like almost um gaudy but uh it was it was so strange and alien that i realized like hold on this is kind of like an extension of the whole like um bakshi school of thought in terms of or like school of design right like um It's like, I, I think Thundar, Conan the, Conan the Adventurer, Thundar, and Pirates of Darkwater are maybe the three shows that suffered the most from censorship rules for cartoons in the U.S. and for North America. That like, if it hadn't been for those censorship rules, I think that those three shows would have been like 
a lot more violent and gory and like just unbelievably cool. Yeah, it, it was so expensive to produce. Do I still have? Hold on a second. Pirates of Dark Water. The saga begins. Look at how fucking cool all that shit is. And the thing is, is that, like, you look at this and you're like, oh, yeah, sure, that's what the cover looks like. But certainly, certainly the show doesn't look exactly like this. And then you watch the show and it looks exactly like this. <laughs> I mean, reduced for, reduced in complexity for animation of the time, but, like, the designs all looked exactly like that. Also, uh, it's important to note... Oh, come on. Come on, focus. It's important to note that this cover illustration was done by Ayaz <laughs> himself. Ayaz here drew this color illustration. Hey, Lurk Love. Hey, Lurk Love. How's it going? The, uh... <laughs> The show does not look like the inset images on the back. <laughs> I mean, the designs still, but uh, imagine if it was that that detailed. Good lord. But yeah, Pirates of Darkwater is... Um, Pirates of Darkwater is... is fantastic. It, 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 in, in, literally fantastic, right? It's like the pinnacle of fantasy that it that it's like it's so alien and strange. Even though some of the uh, even though some of the um, stories were like very much influenced by Star Trek and that kind of stuff, they just they they did such a good job at presenting this like alien world that's just truly alien. And even though they have you know they have flying lizards called Dagrons, <laughs> but they're, like, the way it's animated, the way it's presented is just this, like, it's almost, I think, intended to be a little, like, a little horrible, right? Like, the world isn't nice. It's this, it's this, like, hostile environment, and the, even the water, the dark water, will, will attack you and, and kill you. So, and, and it, it, they really... I think they really put that kind of, like... My God, that's fantastic. ...dangerous, horrifying quality... Into the into the animation and the designs and stuff. Yeah, no one looks fully human. It's it's very interesting. Cinetar, thank you for the raid. We're about to look at a uh, a complete real software. <laughs> We're about to look at a complete real software. I think you'll appreciate this. You'll appreciate this. Dungeon Lords, a fantasy action RPG by D.W. Bradley. Dungeon Lords. <laughs> Cinetar immediately retracts his raid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Dungeon Lords. Uh, the raid alert is from, uh, if it's the one I think of, it's from, uh, I can hear strange music. It's Dungeon really Explorer here. 2. Astral Vortex. I feel Thank you for four I'm months. World. Thank you for four months. I appreciate it. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, the house one. That's from uh, Dungeon Explorer 2's opening scene. I still got to play all the way through Dungeon Explorer 2. But yeah, Dungeon Lords. Look at this. Look at this. Fantastic 3D action RPG. Doesn't it look like a wonderful game? What a wonderful looking game. Live the life of a hero as you step inside a massive world of fantasy filled with action and adventure. In time, only the best will survive, but only one can be Lord. A hey, fractal mind, Mike. Yeah. What what can we do in this game? We can create our create your own character hero, choosing from a variety of races and multiple class specializations. In this new collector's edition, take your game even deeper with amazing new heraldries and character customizations. Nail-biting 
3D action, uh, combat action featuring an arsenal of attack and defense combo moves, as well as numerous new spells to conquer your enemies. Numerous quests and subquests await you. Full support for both single player, standal single player standalone and multiplayer group game sessions. Non-stop game action and exploration in full third person 3D, including outdoor wilderness, swamps, forests, mountains, towns, villages, castles, dungeons, temples, caves, and forbidden ruins. Four different schools of magic and the ability to create even more powerful spells and effects. We've got this like special like heavy duty case. This case is like no joke. It's uh, like I want to say it's like aluminum or something on the outside. Very heavy duty. We've got the game discs here. How many discs is this on? Disc one, disc two. Defense combos. Yeah, it's three discs, it looks like. Three discs. The discs are in quite good shape. You gotta pay for that patch. <laughs> yeah, this is the... Um, this is the collector's edition. This is the collector's edition. So we got... We got good stuff in here. Yeah, this is the this is the like I want to say second collector's edition or something like that. It's the like <laughs> the budget collector's edition or something. It comes in this case, but it doesn't have like the larger box or something. But yeah, this is the good one, the quote unquote good one. There's that, and then inside. got the Dreamcatcher registration card. Register now to win free stuff. Man, I could win free stuff from Dream Dreamcatcher Interactive. Do they still exist? And we got uh, we got the manual. If I remember correctly, it wasn't uh, Thompson Twins on a record. There you go. Yep. Yep. So in here, mostly this is like, um, primarily just like how to play the game. And then there's a little bit about enemies and stuff. So we'll kind of skip over the how to play the game stuff. Uh, let's see. Installation. System requirements. This is always fun to see. Minimum. Operating system. Windows 98 ME 2000 or XP. A 1.0 gigahertz CPU, 384 megabytes of RAM, 1.2 gigabytes of hard drive uh, space available, CD-ROM 4X or higher, video, 64 megabyte DirectX 7 video card, and NVIDIA GeForce 2 GTS or better, um, sound, DirectX 8.1B or better, compatible sound card, uh, input, keyboard, or, and mouse, Recommended. Recommended. Uh, operating system Windows XP. 2.4 gigahertz CPU, 512 meg RAM, 1.2 gigabytes of hard drive, hard disk space, CD-ROM, same thing. Um, video 128 megabytes. DirectX 9 video card, GeForce FX 5700 or better. And how to install, what the menus do. Getting started, the object of the game. What is the object of the game? Object of the game. You start Dungeon Lords in the wilderness outside the town of Fargrove. As you explore the vast wilderness, you'll do battle with a wide variety of foes, developing your character's skills and your own combat prowess. As you start talking to the various characters who inhabit the world, you will learn of the conflict that grips this land and learn of your own role in the events that are to unfold. In the course of the game, you will take part in numerous quests, many of which will bring you closer to completing your ultimate goals, and others of which will reveal more about the world around you and provide your character with the experience and equipment he or she will need to complete the game. So there we go. That's the object of the game. The object of the game is to develop your character's skills. 
and take part in quests. <laughs> no lore. <laughs> what do we have here? We've got um, selecting stuff out. Here we go. This is a this is a good thing to read. Here is um. Hey, Felly, how's it going? Let's see here. Character races description. Human. Humans are one of the prominent races in the world of dungeon lords. Elf, these humanoids are an ancient race, wise and long-lived. The elves of Arendelle are noble and civilized, while some of the other elven clans, such as the Drey, are more feral. Not the drow, the Drey. Uh, dwarf, these tough... Gruff humanoids are short of stature and heavy framed. Urgoth. These huge muscular demigoths are feared and respected throughout the world. Strong as oxen and dumb as a bag of rocks, Urgoths can quick be quickly developed to handle the heaviest of weapons and armor with unprecedented ease. Uh, Wilvan. These wily and cunning beastmen are a fast and often sinister demigoth race. Zaur. These reptilian demigoths are feared for their speed, force, and toughness. Their wide lizard grin is a fearsome sight to many of the more civilized races. Thrall. Thralls are a race of small-statured impish demigoths. They're amazingly quick and clever but small of frame and prefer subterfuge and guile over face-to-face -face combat. And character classes. Uh, adept, fighter, mage, and rogue. We know what those do. Um, adepts do celestial magic. Mages uh, use arcane magic. There's strength, intellect, dexterity, agility, vitality, and honor. Um, skills, weaponry, defense... General Magic Thief and Diabolic. And then there's Heraldry. Heraldry here. It's too small to really see. The Acrobat. The Fool of Fortune. The Lady and the Lion. The Magician. The Astrologer. We've got Controls. Focus. There we go. We've got Controls. We've got... Equipping your character. Slots we've got available here for equipping your characters. Trinkets, belt, helmet, rings, shoulder, armor, pants, boots, gloves, shield, primary weapon, and alternate weapon. Types of inventory. Keys, letters, junk, all. Potions, invoke items, melee combat, combination attacks, standard strikes, advanced strikes. A character with a skill of five or higher in his or her equipped weapon or ninjutsu can perform advanced strikes. Combat defense, blocking, leap sideways, roll forward, roll sideways, backflip. Statuses, ooh. ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, here we go. Uh, combat damage, different types of status effects. Asleep, afraid, silenced, paralyzed, blind, choking, poisoned, charmed, diseased, cursed, frozen, vined. Tips for combat. Shield. Know thy enemy. Learn your attack combinations. Mix it up. Evasion in combat. Know your attributes. Use the quick menu. Revive carefully. Getting treasure. Disarming traps. Picking locks. Camping, moon bridges. Moon bridges. Get an image of a moon bridge there. Uh, talking, buying and selling, magic. Arcane spells are primarily offensive in nature. Celestial spells primarily encompass the arts of healing and other forms of beneficent magic. Rune magic comprises a combination of offensive and defensive spells and is perhaps the most diverse of school of magic. Nether magic deals with the dark arts of summoning fell creatures, bending the will of enemies, and launching attacks of dark and sinister nature. And then there's a, uh... There's a list of ingredients, and where to get them, 
so you can farm reagents for your spells, I guess. <laughs> Mixing magical spells. Monsters and enemies. Animals. Bats, rats, wolves, snakes, scorpions, spiders. Creatures. Dungeon ghoul, mummy, skeleton, slimes. Denizens, soldiers, elves, goblins, thieves, trolls. We get, we get a, a picture of a skeleton here. Hello, camera. Hello, camera. Focus on the goblin. Or, yeah, it's a goblin, right? And all this cool stuff in the game, right? Right. Such a such a cool, such a cool game. Right? Sounds so cool. There's all this stuff in it. Here's the credits. There were a couple of pages of multiplayer stuff there. Uh, Appendix A, keyboard controls. Character classes. Oh, man, we can be so many different classes in this. Check this out. Uh, Adept, Battle Mage, Budoka, Cabalist, Celestial, Crusader, Death Lord, Enchantress, Fighter, Hatamoto, Hunter, Imperial, Kenjasai, Knight, Lord, Mage, Marauder, Monk, Ninja Lord, Paladin, Ranger Lord, Rogue, Samurai, Sorcerer, Shadow Lord, Shaolin Master, Shugenja, Stargazer, Trickster, Valkyrie, War Witch, Warlock, Warlord, Wizard, all these fucking just, just, just giant list of classes yeah warlord is the uh warlord is the uh is the the, the crossing point between the war family and the lord family but yeah this huge list of classes and like um skills and heraldry and learning bonuses We've got all the all the skills over here. We've got weaponry. We've got archery, light weapons, medium weapons, heavy weapons, light pole weapons, heavy pole weapons, light dual weapons, medium dual weapons, thrown weapons, light armor, heavy armor, uh, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, light shield, medium shield, heavy shield, parry. Uh, we've got general skills. We've got athletics. Four levels of athletics. We've got bargain. We've got repair. We've got scout. We've got magic skills. We've got alchemy. Arcane magic, celestial magic, channel, identify, magic weaponry, nether magic, rune magic. We got scribe is a skill. We got thief skills. Thief skills give us disarm, trap, inspect, pick locks, sneak, and steal. We got uh, diabolic. We got backstab, critical strike, crushing blow, drain life, Hawkeye, inflict wounds, iron will, ninjutsu. Shadow Lord is also a skill. Um, spell Fire. Man, all these skills. There must be like a billion ways to build a satisfying character. Surely none of these things are broken and like uh, just totally worthless. We've got spells. Free freezing Touch. Shrieking Star. Fire Minds. Magic Missile. Burning Hands. Blasting Winds. Fire burst, wall of fire, fireball, freeze, shooting sparks, zap, burning vapors, ice shards, whirlwind, blast nova, flamethrower, ice ball, freezing vapors, pillar of fire, fire missiles, ice nova, firestorm, ice storm, fire nova, cataclysm. We got any good spells? Here's all these celestial spells. And the uh, nether spells. What do we got here? Mystic vision. The regular heal stuff. Resurrection. Prismatic rays. Breath of air. Illusionary visage. Ward of petrification. <laughs> Cinetar's played this. Cinetar played it all the way through, I believe. Oh, 
man, nether spells, fear, summon rats, pain, bloodlust, summon wolves, choking cloud, summon beast, gripping vines, blade of bale, suffocate, summon giant, dragon claws, summon fiend, Summon Death Lord. Hate. <laughs> We've got rune spells. And they're basically just rune this, rune that. Buffs mostly. Earth's Wrath, but it's spelled with a U. U-R-F. U-R-T-H. Causes boulders to rain from the sky. Vengeance. I don't want to see you on my Earth again. This is the coolest part. This is the coolest thing in the box, though. I saved it for last. Comes with a map and a portrait, a like half tone portrait of some people that may or may not be in the game. Then we got the map itself. The Human Lands. We have anything good in here? Are there any any good place names? Good fantasy place names? See Lost Lakes, Talendor, Devil's Marsh, Woodlands, Fargrove, Lake Dyer, Sea of Woe, Battlefields of the Dead, Skulldoon. Skulldoon sounds like a uh, sounds like a fantasy cur currency for the like evil empire. It's just coins with a skull on them. Black Swamp. Southern Boulders. The Veil of Ruin. Northwestern Slopes. Northern Steps. But yeah, there we go. There's the map for the game as well. It's pretty cool. I always love when a game comes with a, a fantasy map. But, in case you were wondering, Dungeons Lords is not a very good game. <laughs> it is not a very good game. It's, I would say, the collector's edition is maybe barely playable. The original version is, I think, unplayable. I mean, like, it's un it, you cannot complete it. Um, this version is, like, barely playable after the first bit. They released, I think, two other editions after this one. Um, with the late, most recent one being a Steam release recently. I also tried to get... I, I bought a gift copy of this for Macaw, and he's yet to play it. I want to keep... I want to keep uh, reminding Macaw that he, he, he ought to play Dungeon Lords one day. And he keeps saying, like, Yeah, 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 it looks so cool, I'm excited about it. And then, like, he doesn't play it, which belies his true feelings, eh? But, uh, yeah, the good thing about the game is that, like, it's not the worst quality writing. It's like... <laughs> Hentai weed puzzles. That was, that was, by, that was by far one of the, one of the funniest, uh, one of the funniest reactions. Where he's like, he just leaves steam open. He's like... Steam is popping up again. It's uh, what? Hentai weed puzzles? <laughs> the clip is out there somewhere. It's a very good clip. <laughs> he, like, cause it just comes out of his mouth, and he like doesn't realize what he's saying. 
he's uh, like he's not processing what he's saying because he's reading direct from screen to mouth, <laughs> which turned out really good for everyone in terms of entertainment value. <laughs> but there you go, Tobor. There's your uh, deep space waifu. I notice he signs out of Steam these days when he streams. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> there's, like, it barely has any of the three words in its title. But yeah, we're just gonna... Oh no, it's breathing fire. We're just gonna stand around here and kill shit until we level up. We could go into the... Oh, right, you gotta stop spell these guys, because otherwise they heal themselves. <laughs> I mean, it has puzzles. It barely has puzzles, but it doesn't have any of the first two words. Are they even, like, sliding puzzles? I think they're just, like, click and drag, uh... Click and drag, like, jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> F-22 Interceptor for the Genesis? Where'd that come from? <laughs> Why would I stream that? Why? Me of all people. <laughs> Duke Donuts, well-known... 16-bit flight simulator streamer. <laughs> A polyrhythmic drop. Yeah, my NES has the uh, the RGB mod in it for the output. Because at the time, didn't have uh, I didn't have any option for uh, recording uh, composite uh, input. I do now. But I got the mod done before I did, so. And yeah, we're we're playing off the we're playing off the real NES. Playing off the real NES. We're using the um, EverDrive N8 flash cart for convenience. Uh, apple fritters. Oh, I wish I had an apple fritter. I've been thinking about getting a donut. With all the with all the stress and stuff going on lately. Donut would be really nice or a fritter or something like that. Oh man, it might be shit. I have to go a really long way to get cider donuts though. They're like out in the hills to the that way. That way. Yeah, so this is, um... One of the things... Uh... Oh, man. Pie. I would... Fuck. Pie or donuts. Both good options. Um... One of the, uh... What was I gonna say? So one of the things that... I tend to do... I think it's... Um... I think it's, like... It's the word I'm looking for. Um... I think, like... It's hard to strike the right balance, but... With, I didn't stop spell him, so he's gonna heal. Um, stop spell. <laughs> this and Blaster Master. Yeah, I, man, I should play Blaster. I should put Blaster Master on the fucking in my Game Keeper, my Game Keeper here. Courage and wit have served thee well. Thou hast been promoted to the next level. 
Thy power increases by 5. Thy response speed by increases by 2. Thy maximum hit points increase by 8. Thy maximum magic points increase by 12. Ooh, ooh, good level up. Good level up there. Uh, I think we have all of the best stuff, right? The silver shield, Erdrich's sword, Erdrich's armor. Um. So, the way I capture stuff is I always I always try to do analog video up until the last uh, last possible moment, which is the capture card itself. <laughs> hey, Mark Anthony, how are you? Also, hey, dog. Um, so. The only, th the only thing I would do differently is if I could, like, stick a thing onto the, the actual video chip of these systems and get raw, like, raw digital RGB output. I would do that. <laughs> I would, I would st stick a chip clip on there or something and, and get that if such a thing were available. I would, I would wholeheartedly support it. Um, the, uh, but outside of that, right? Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. But outside of that, uh, the, um, the thing that I like to do is, is put everything analog up to the very last moment and then convert it where I have the most control, right? So a lot of the, like, HDMI console mods, or even, like, you can't really see it. Well, you could probably see it in the other shot, but there's a... I can... Hold on a second. I can move this little this little slime guy over here. You can see there's an OSSC here, but that just powers the CRT because it's fast. The OSSC is fast. But, uh, the, um... I try to stay away from using the OSSC to output to my capture card because then I lose I lose the control at the la at the single point. Um, although the OSSC does have a fantastic level of control over like what you can do, there's certain stuff you just can't change about it sometimes. Um, but that said, I could get digital RGB out of the consoles, that would be fantastic. Imagine how, how clean and clear you could make something like the Nintendo 64 look if you were getting just like the direct output of its um, of its circuits before uh, before it went through the analog conversion process. Yeah, I, this was one of the first con. Th this was one of the first console RPGs that I played. Um, anal log. <laughs> oh man, anal log video. <laughs> hey Zinglon, how are you? I sometimes say that on on purpose. Yeah, the Dreamcast Dreamcast VGA is is fantastic. I mean the the Dreamcasts uh the Dreamcasts uh What's the word I'm looking for? It's like frame buffer setup. It's it's hardware is unbelievably good for for capturing stuff. <laughs> like if you compare like contemporaries, the the Dreamcast, the PlayStation Two, like the PlayStation Two's frame buffer setup and like output. 
is basically like, <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> we'll do whatever we want. <laughs> Can't catch me. Can't capture me. GV USB 2. Is that the um, composite adapter? Composite adapter. I don't need to stop spell this guy. What am I doing? I'm like, I'm getting confused. Oh, excellent move. One shot the werewolf. Yeah, so the PS2, <laughs> I did some comparisons recently. Whoops. I love how expressive the, uh, the wyvern face is on this. HD retrovision composite cables. HD retrovision composite cables. I don't know about composite cables. A hassle of the OSSC. The OSSC, by the way, the OSSC is great uh, for anything that's progressive scan. It's not great for PS2 or uh, old computer. Or, it's not great for PS2 or computer stuff. Component, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, if you have a way to take in component and you can um, and you can uh, get the uh, you can get a, a cable solution that's usually like uh, that's usually the best bet. The thing with the OSSC is that like You really have to mess with it to get it to capture anything that isn't, like, 240p or, like, real specific stuff. Um, it'll capture and it'll output... Uh, it'll, it, it'll work, right? It'll work for most stuff. Hey, K Price, how are you? Um, but getting it to work might be, like... You might spend four hours tweaking settings to make it work properly for something you might have to set up multiple profiles for example if you're doing stuff on ms dos you might need to set up separate profiles that shift it several pixels left or right uh, and then load the profile when you switch to um uh when you switch from like uh 640 by 400 to 320 by 200 because they're just offset by like two two pixels uh, Jessica Fleur, I I know her from like around. I think Tom stream, re retrograde Tom stream, a couple other places. I've spoken to her a couple of times. And yeah, like switching between interlace and de like deinterlacing and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that's funny. That's funny, Kate Price. I didn't know that. Ah, a timer for OBS. So I use... <laughs> I use a timer that um, I made. <laughs> which has a kind of specific purpose. Um, I... Uh, I built this timer because I couldn't find a timer that had, like, good save and load functionality for times and that had a pause function and those are like the, the two things that I wanted right I wanted the ability to start a timer pause it when I take breaks and like save and load uh, save and load times between sessions and that's it and I could not find a good timer that did that and was, like, straightforward to use. So I made one. And, like, it's real janky. <laughs> it's real janky, but it works. It does exactly what I need it to. It also defaults to Comic Sans if you don't write a configuration file for it. <laughs> 
which is great. I love that it, it's, it's an application that will default to Comic Sans if you don't configure it. But yeah, if anybody's if anybody's interested in the timer, I think I posted it on my Discord. I think I posted it in Discord. Um, but it's like it's a real simple thing. I don't have I don't have a I don't have a uh, it rewards you purple tentacle. I don't have a GitHub account. I don't think not a proper one anyway. Um. So, like, um, <laughs> yeah, it rewards you, but, uh, what was I going to say? Um, if, if I haven't posted it, I'll, I will, I will post it. Um, if anyone wants to use it, it's, it is completely unlicensed. <laughs> Just please don't. Please don't try to resell it. <laughs> don't try to sell products with my code in them. It's a bad idea. <laughs> but uh, I will happily, uh, I'll happily give give out the binaries for it. But you know, no warranty, no warranty on any of the stuff I write. There could be all kinds of, uh, there could be all kinds of stuff it does. See your computer that's unintended. I did fix the thing where it was using 100% of, uh... Can't swear for 10 minutes. Okay, it would work for that. I mean, it's got... It's got a start, pause, and reset functionality in it, so... It's, like, relatively easy to... It's relatively easy to do that. The only thing is, it doesn't support any hotkey stuff. Because, like, to me, hotkeys wouldn't, like, unless it can read My God, input. that's fantastic. Shallon 50k with the raid. Welcome, raiders. Oh man, Game Boy raid. What are you doing on Game Boy? Were you playing games or making games? Nice. Nice. I was actually just talking about, uh... I was just talking about development myself. The, the timer down there, somewhere, is, is my own invention. <laughs> Rage quit Game Boy coding. Oh, nice. Game Boy Color Doc Cosmos. When's Game Boy Color Dock the Destroyer? <laughs> That's awesome, though. That's awesome. I have no idea. I didn't. All, I don't know the first thing about Game Boy programming, or like the Game Boy's technical specs, or what kind of processors and stuff might be in it. No idea. I'm just grinding in Dragon Warrior. No exit. No exit. Nice. I gotta check that out. Horrible processor that makes you cry. <laughs> hey, Christian Iverson. Yeah, the neural network chat rules. <laughs> Folks, if you like game development, if you like game development, I recommend you go follow Shallan. He does a lot of game development streams. Lots of, uh, lots of really cool stuff and, like, excellent way of describing what's going on so that even a kind of novice like myself can can understand at least a get a get a picture of I think what it is that's going on what could they want from me Christian Iverson thank you for the follow welcome welcome we're gonna work we're, we're grinding here to gain one more level I think and, uh, I'm being followed what could they want from me? Cosmi No, thank you for the thank you for the follow. We're gonna gr we're gonna gain one more level here, and then we're gonna make an attempt at the Dragon Lord's castle. 
Which I, like, accidentally got to the Dragon Lord last time and got owned. It's just a shitty Z80. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, right before you, uh... Right before you arrived, I was talking about, I had the, the timer down there I built, I built for myself because I needed a timer that had saving and loading. Uh, I Heart Corruption it is Shallon 50 k who is in the chat right now. You should be able to, uh, I think you can, like, what do you do? You click on their name, and you click on the name in the modal that pops up. And it'll take you to their channel so you can go follow them. And it should open in a new window, I think, so it'll keep this stream on in the background so you can come right back. Or, uh, Shallon, if you have a link, uh, if you have your channel link, you can throw it in the chat there. I don't have a, uh... I don't have... I don't have a bot where I can shout out <laughs> and link to the channel. <laughs> I'm so manual with everything... Like, everything that people normally automate, I don't. <laughs> and then all the shit that people, all the shit that people do manually, I automate for some reason. Like, look at this. This fucking thing. I have a Python script that runs in the background so that when I change from one system to another, it automatically swaps all the channels and stuff. Hey, no problem. No problem. But, uh, yeah, like, I do, like, extremely weird stuff that's automated. And then I don't have a bot running that does, like, shoutouts and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, oh well. <laughs> you know what's kind of weird? I just noticed. Pretty sure. <laughs> Fendi Magic Knight for that. <laughs> so I noticed that either... Yeah, either... The Dragon Warriors... The Dragon Warriors shield... Is either ring-shaped... Or it has... A flesh-colored section in the center. But it's got a little a little flesh spot in the middle of the shield. <laughs> oh man, imagine if you programmed a if you programmed a bot that would like complain and like sometimes not do stuff <laughs> program advanced twitch chat bot AI so you're like hey can you shout this out and it's like no I'm busy <laughs> they're like sigh <laughs> can't you do it yourself says the bot <laughs> Do you think do you think the shield okay Here's the question Is the shield like donut shaped that it's like this you know Or is it a solid Is it solid with just a big a big like flesh colored drawing on it It's like, like you put it on your arm, and then your arm just shows through in the center. It's like a reverse buckler. <laughs> yeah, you can like, you can like put the shield up here and put your crossbow on it. Oh man, there's just a big lump of flesh on the shield. Actual flesh on the shield. That's, that's probably the most likely.
<clears throat> but yeah, I used to have a bug. I used to have a bug in my timer where it would consume 100% of the processing of an entire CPU core whenever it was running. <laughs> because I just needed to add like, I don't know, sleep one or something into one of the routines. It was just like, must be completely accurate down to the CPU cycle time. So it was running every CPU cycle. It would run. <laughs> it would take all of the all of the CPU power it could get to, to run extremely accurate video game times. And then cut off the like eight hundred digits to the right that are that are not visible. <laughs> then I also had to fix a bug in it where if it if it went over twenty four hours it would stop counting properly. So, like, when it first happened, the first time I played a game that went over 24 hours, I just, like, added to my Twitch overlay plus one day. <laughs> that was good times. I think that was during, um, Dark Secrets of Africa. Oh, man. I how close we are to gaining a level. You want to bet the level is at like... 32,000. <laughs> let's, um, let's return. But I do want to know. I want to know how far we are from a level. Watch, it's going to be like a couple hundred experience points, so it's not going to be... It's not going to be worthwhile to like go back to, uh, Carentin or whatever it is. I am greatly pleased that thou hast returned, Dad. Before reaching thy next level of experience, thou must gain 2,025 points. Will you tell me of thy deeds so they won't be forgotten? Yes, thy deeds have been recorded in the Imperial Scrolls of Honor. So we should continue that quest, yes. Goodbye now, Dad? Take care, and tempt not the fates. Let's do this. Let's... stairs. Let's make sure, what do we have for items? We only have six herbs, we need more. We have wings. We have a fairy flute. Rainbow drop dragon scales. Uh... We have a repel spell, we can get fairy water. We need more herbs, I think, if we're allowed to carry them. Gotta go to the inn. Six magic keys, I think, is the max. Good night. Do -do 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 -do. I need to see if we can get more herbs. Get more herb. Ah, cannot hold anymore. Six is a strange limit. I wonder if that has to do with, like, memory space. How many, like... How many herbs they let you carry. I think that's a, like, memory limitation. Why six, though? Can you divide like a bit-wise pattern into... <laughs> the thing that I can't get out of my head is the fucking do 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 of the uh, town music. Because it sounds like fucking Munster's theme, especially... Uh... You can have up to six of certain items. You can have up to six of certain items. But, like, you have a limited number of slots in your inventory. And, like, six herbs takes up the same amount of space as one herb. I'm curious if, like... I'm curious if there's... 
I'm curious why six. Whether it's like an intentional balance decision and they're like... Um, they're not including... The magician is running away. Uh, they're not including... Ketchup packet. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously. Same size as a bicycle. Stairs. Can I just go straight west here? One packet. Hey, maybe it's one of those, like, miniature collapsible bicycles, you know? The, like, folding bicycles. And the ketchup packet is... They're referring to... You know those... Um, you know those... Uh, what's the thing I'm, I'm thinking of? The, like... The ketchup dispensers, they have a big bag that feeds them. You know what I mean? It's just a bag. Well. Well. What if, what if you referred to that bag? What is a ketchup packet than a bag full of ketchup, right? Right? So, ketchup packet, about this big, right? And then, like, one of those, like, Small wheeled foldable bicycles that folds into a package about this big. It's about the same size, right? Just gotta, just gotta more clearly define your uh, your stuff there, you know. It's a ketchup pack. <laughs> I suppose so. Ketchup pack. Yeah. I think I can take a demon knight, right? Every step. Magi Wyvern. Very important to stop spell these guys. Go around to the left. Oops. Dodged. Okay. Chance to kill it. Yep. Got it. Good. We saved at the king, right? Before we started this journey. go here. Got him. So you'll notice... Oops, that's bad. Probably notice that... Um, We need to spell radiant. Uh, the um, the encounters in this game are number one less frequent than they were before. They're not like literally every step; they're only figuratively every step. And. They're not all surprise attacks. Which, you know what? I think, I think it has to do with like, if you run from a whole bunch of encounters, it starts making the encounters harder or something. There's like something that gets corrupted and um, it doesn't, 
like, it doesn't reset on death. I think it, it only resets when you, like, fully power the system off and reload it. That's what I think. I can't prove it, but I think it, yeah, yeah, I think so. Although it could happen just after a I think certain amount of what time. They want from me? Mr. Speaker, thank you for the follow. Axe Knight. That one we want to run from. Whoops. Blue Dragon. Run. Look at that. Like, as soon as I start running away, the, uh, the frequency of encounters goes up. And here. Now, wait a second. I'm actually going to look up the map to this, because I I have done both of the routes in this. Uh, Dragon Warrior NES maps. Uh, Realm of Darkness. There we go. Dungeon maps. Charlock Castle. Yeah, there we go. This one's hard enough to, to understand. Even when... Uh, when you know what's going on. Okay, so there's N. We need U, S, R. Okay, there we go. Wait. Pardon me. Pardon me. Okay, here we are. Here. And we're going to start running away from stuff. Constantly. Stairs. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Armored Knight? No! <laughs> no. Let's run away from the Armored Knight. Ha! <laughs> oh, that's good. Is that... Is that just the, um... Is that the grayscale? Because the values are so low for that? Oh, we can take a wizard. Easy. That's really good. That's really good. It kind of looks like Hayes's uh, last ninja emote to me. There we go. Kill me, Axe Knight. There we go. No! Another one. See? As soon as I started running away from battles, we get this shit. And now we gotta heal more. 
Yulmora restores a lot of health, though. A red dragon. Honestly, this is probably the, like, fastest area in the game to grind if these enemies are, like, weak to sleep or something. They probably give more XP or whatever, but... I want to see if I can take on the the Dragon Lord in my at my current level. Okay, spell. Uh, let's do item herb. Item herb. Is that our max HP? 138, okay. Talk. Welcome, Dad. I'm the Dragon Lord, King of Kings. I have been waiting long for one such as thee. I give thee now a chance to share this world and to rule half of it if thou will now stand beside me. What sayest thou? Will the great warrior stand with me? No, 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 no. Thou art a fool! Look at him! <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at his little eyes! <laughs> there's a, uh... There's an excellent clip of, uh... When, uh, when another streamer, Cyraptor, was playing this, and he got to the Dragon Lord for the first time. He was playing it blind. Gets to the Dragon Lord, loads up this sprite, and he lost it. <laughs> it's such a good clip. The Mighty Dragon Lord. It's a wonderful clip. I'll, uh, I'll post it in the Discord uh, a little later, if I remember to. All right, fight. Wait, none of these spells work on him, right? We can't stop spell him, probably? Let's try to stop spell him. Yeah, we can't so stop spell him. Well, we'll try, right? Yeah. And he just does hurt more a whole bunch. But we'll just attack him. I forget if that means... Yeah, okay. He's trying stop spell on me now. Thou hast done well in defeating the Dragon Lord. Oh, not quite! The Dragon Lord revealed his true self! Look at that. He's stepping all over the text box, even. You don't give a shit. You don't give a shit about the menus. Command? Yeah, so with this, we just. I think it's just a, a damage race, right? Yeah, new song. Breathing fire. We need to heal more now. He attacks, he does 42 damage. We do 13. It's possible for him to kill us any one of these turns. We kinda have to get lucky. Okay. We can do one more fight, I think. We're faster than him. But he could, uh... He's breathing fire. 42. We should heal now. We should heal more. We got two more heal mores in here. And he has a lot of hit points. Alright, heal more. Okay, he could kill us, so we're gonna heal more. Can we cast hurt more on him? The spell will not work. Yeah, so then we die. 
We're not quite high enough level to beat the Dragon Lord, unfortunately. Thou art dead. However, death should not have taken thee, Dad. I will give thee another chance to reach the next level experience. Uh, to reach the next level, thy experience points must increase by 1,458. Now go, Dad? <laughs> Stairs. Beep boop. Ah, uh, we need to go replenish our herbs. Now the thing is, I can do two things here, right? I can do... As far as I know, yeah, it's just a damage race. And if you don't grind enough, you lose the damage race. Uh, because you do, like, nine damage to him instead of, like, 20. <laughs> a few points of attack power can can make the difference between, like, dealing double damage um, for whatever, whatever calculation this game uses. Yeah, look at this. It's, it's fucking... Folks, there's an issue. I cannot figure this out. I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced this. Um, you'll notice sometimes, and it's, it's pretty clear with this game... That, like, it'll either duplicate or uh, drop a number of frames in, like, rapid succession in, like, a cluster. Like, it'll do one, and then it'll do, like, four or five. It'll do one, and then it'll do, like, four or five. Sometimes it'll, it'll be issue-free. For like half a minute, several dozen seconds, and then it'll, then you'll 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 see one sneak in there here and there. Now the NES runs at sixty point oh nine, uh, sixty point oh nine something hertz. Yeah. Oh, change the TTS voice. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that right now. Pause the timer on the game. Let's pick a new TTS voice. Streamlabs dashboard. Login. All widgets. Alert box. Oh, that's already up there. Okay. Uh, bits. Text to speech. Currently on Ruben. Currently on Ruben. Uh, we don't want to use the le uh, legacy voices, I'm thinking. Not the legacy voice. Go with Carla. We're going to go with Carla. We go. We've got Carla for the TTS voice. Hey, Momo Tick Tick. Thank you for redeeming. Change the TTS voice. Carla is the new TTS voice. DW randomizer. Interesting. Interesting. The better test this shit to make sure it is up to snuff. Wait, did it not? Fucking god damn it. Hold on a second. It does this where you save it and it doesn't save and then you have to go back and save it a second time multiple times. But I can replay that alert. Hold on. That was still Ruben, I think. It says Carla here. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on, we can do this. We can do this. Scroll down. Scroll down. There we go. Replay. Hi, boy. Hi, boy. We better test this shit to make sure it's up to snuff. 
There we go. There we go. Hopefully this one will pronounce Chambella 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 The oldie does this way better test it again. <laughs> no, I forgot. I was paying attention to chat. And I... Thank you for the 100 bits. Our hero, Jack, thank you for the 100 bits. The 100 bits. Shadrock, thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> but yes, the good news is, if it doesn't take the first save, I can always... Uh, I can always re replay it. So it's not, uh... 115 experience. Alright, so metal slimes are, like, the good thing. This is a good area to, f to farm. <laughs> this also had platforming! An RPG with platforming elements instead of the other way around. It does not. The slimes are immune to magic, as far as I know. Just extremely hard to hit. A cliff draws near! Well, that's basically Zelda 2, isn't it? Who would, who would want to make a game like Zelda 2, anyway? No! Slime, come back! <laughs> I mean, there's also Battle of Olympus. Battle of Olympus. Have you played that, Tobor? Battle of Olympus? You should stream that. Excellent move. Excellent move. 130 damage. So if I get an excellent move on the Dragon Lord. I could kill him pretty easily, I think, in his second form. Yeah, I played this. I played this all the way through and finished it as a kid. Oh, I fucking I forgot to, to put the timer back on. An excellent move while platforming. It's just like when you hit the jump button, it works, and then when you hit the jump button, the rest of the time it like you only get like a tiny hop or you fall off a ledge. Shadow of Olympus. What is Shadow of Olympus? <laughs> Sometimes you just fucking you do the you do the jump from uh It Came from the Desert on Turbo C D. Have you seen that, Tobor? Have you seen It Came from the Desert on Turbo C D? Oh, Battle of Olympus. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't know very much about it, other than it has like exactly the same movement weirdness as uh, as um, uh, Zelda Two. That like, if you press left and right at the same time, your character like vibrates and then launches into the stratosphere. Um, yeah, in, uh, so, your character's momentum in, during a jump, in, uh, 
Character's momentum during a jump in It Came From The Desert on Turbo CD is, uh... If you look up my, uh... If you look up my world record time on uh, speedrun.com or whatever for uh, It Came From The Desert, you'll find it consists almost entirely of jumping. Hold on a second, let me look this up. Speed run, it came from the desert. Uh, what? Allow script. This, where's the run? Is this the run? Yeah, here we go. Don't need a timestamp. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. I should change that to, to say world record. <laughs> so... So the jump, the jump in, uh, it came from the desert. The way it works is there are, every frame it calculates, every frame it calculates your uh, velocity based on two factors. Uh, the frame that you're in uh, the, the, the frame of the jump that you're in, and uh, whether or not the jump button is pressed down. If you tap the jump button, your guy will do a short backflip that doesn't move very far. If you hold the jump button down, normally, uh, he will um, basically, like, if you hold it down, he'll do a, a much higher, like, a much higher trajectory and, like, f travel further, both up and uh, backwards with the backflip. Um, then, uh, if you do... If you... Uh, pause the game. It resets the counter of the number of frames to remain in each jump position. So you never leave the jump position that you're in. So therefore, if you jump, and on the first frame of the jump, you pause the game, hold down the jump button, and press the pause button again, the game will advance one frame. And you will continue to advance one frame while resetting the jump counter. So you'll just, you'll, you'll start your backflip, and then just launch off into space. <laughs> you'll just launch off into space. As long as you keep pressing the pause button. Then when you unpause, it'll continue the rest of the animation normally, and you'll land. <laughs> you can also, if you time it right, because the one of the frames of the jump is is directly uh is is directly horizontal. So if you're on the horizontal frame and you you pause the game. You'll just continue flying horizontally, uh, straight horizontally, <laughs> forever. It's quite good. It's quite good. <laughs> it's a necessary technique for the uh, for the speed run. Hell, it's practically necessary for playing the game normally, even when you're not speed running. That game's a trip, though. I have a playthrough of it, um... I have a bad end, normal playthrough of it, and the speed run for the good ending. Um... It's actually way faster to get the good ending than the bad ending. <laughs> Which is funny to me. Like, speed running to the bad ending would take, like... 
probably 20 minutes or something. If I had to guess, if you skipped everything, you'd have to, s you'd want to skip everything. You'd want to avoid any of the um, shooting gallery scenes. Kill yourself as soon as possible in the uh, mine and uh, overhead action scenes. Do damage, come on. No! No, he's still here. We have a chance. Got him. I think it's 30,000 XP to go up a level, maybe. I was getting lucky on a streak of metal slimes for a minute there. But then I'm I'm no longer getting lucky. Spell stop spell. These guys can put you to sleep, which is actually dangerous. There we go. 30003. Courage and wit have served thee well. Thou hast been promoted to the next level. Thy power increases by three. Thy response speed increases by two. Thy maximum hit points increase by 11. The maximum magic points increase by six. That's the good thing here is the magic gets us much, much closer to uh, beating the boss. Now let's see. What do we need? What do we need for all uh, the rest of this? For the last level, maybe? I don't know. Thy old English increaseth by twain. I'm greatly pleased that thou hast returned, Dad. Before reaching thy next level of experience, thou must gain 3,997 uh, 3, points. You tell me of thy deeds so they won't be forgotten. Yes. Thy deeds have been recorded on the Imperial Scrolls of Honor. You wish to continue your quest? Yes. Goodbye now, Dad? Take care and tempt not the fates. Imagine if you made a whole fucking game that was actually... Like, the entire game was done in, like, Middle English or... Or, like, old... Actual Old English. And was literally impossible to understand by most people. You have to get, like, that one company of, uh, that one company of, like, uh, the, um, what are they? They're, like, they're, like, reenactors of, like, plays and stuff from, like, the, the early, the early times. <laughs> and they do it in, like, the appropriate accent and the correct language and stuff like that. And it's like, it's a beautiful performance, but it's not possible to understand it for a normal person. <laughs> you have to get them to like, uh, do your voice acting for your game.
yeah, Anglo-Saxon runes, but like not just a not just a cipher alphabet like they did in uh, Ultima. The actual words are are written that way too, so it's like doubly difficult. <laughs> I keep forgetting if you die, you just go back to... You just go back to the castle, so... And you lose half your gold. Well, I don't have any any use for gold. I don't have any use for gold, so... There's, like, there's no reason not to just go challenge the Dragon Lord. Take every fight along the way and try to save my magic. A warlock appears. Dead. Got him. So I was starting to I was starting to mention this before. Um I was starting to mention this before. With the like smooth, consistent rate scrolling on this game, I'm noticing it again. There's this thing where like it's not a dropped frame, and it's not a duplicated frame because of, like, capture card uh, stuff. Like, I have a separate window for the capture card, the the, um, the pure source of what the capture card is getting. A and that's totally fine. It's totally without issue. But then, <laughs> there's, uh... There's this thing that happens where... As it's getting frames, it's actually like it's actually duplicating or um, missing frames. So it'll go like one, two, two, three, five, six, or something like that, right? Um, and the result is you see just a just a teensy bit of uh, jerkiness. Uh, That's better. Uh, you see, just a, ti a tiny bit of jerkiness. Uh, oh no, don't cast sleep. Uh, you see a tiny bit of jerkiness in the scrolling. And really what that means is... Um, it's, it's like fucked up something. And the weird thing is, it only happens in OB... It, I should say, the weird thing is it only happens... For uh, games that, or or any application that uses like, uh, DirectX or like modern ways of accessing the GPU, the capture card window itself uses GDI. And I've, I like, it seems like some people experience this and some people don't, and it's just like. Randomly, Windows will be unable to maintain a consistent frame rate for anything that uses the like WP uh, that uses accelerated um, uh, frameworks. It's so strange, so strange to me. It's very easy to see on like. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, very easy to see on smooth scrolling. You'll you'll see. I mean, it's happening a bunch here. Um, you see it on smooth scrolling. You see it on uh, fifty hertz flickers. Well, well, that's not a good thing to happen here. Ha! Put the damn Axe Knight to sleep. Well, let's heal more.
I think your resistance to sleep is basically zero. I guess you just fight that guy. You don't want to... How much experience do these guys give? We need 4,000, right? Oh, never mind. Never mind. We basically died. Oh, we awoke in time. He just did like 120 damage one sleep spell. Yeah, only 54 XP compared to like 30 or 100 for that other area. Let's see if we can stop spell him. There we go. Yeah, you don't get to do that. Excellent move. So we'd have to get one hundred, so like 80 Axe Knight fights or something. Am I doing that math right? Something like 80 Axe Knight fights to get a, uh, to get a level. <laughs> green dragons are what like 45 yeah that makes makes no sense to fight an axe knight Shovel Knight, but for wood. <laughs> There's no reason to fight an Axe Knight ever. Wizard, good fight. Sometimes they do 20 damage. Sometimes they do 2 damage. And they die in 2 hits. No MP use required. Oh, he got a he got a pretty good hit in there. And they give you 4 experience less. Fortunately, the Axe Knights can attack before you're ready. So you just get owned. Anyway. All right, Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon, let's fight him. Okay. Breathing Fire isn't isn't too bad. Their attack isn't too bad. They go down in a few hits, and they give you 60 XP. Blue Dragon? Good thing to fight. Wait, fuck, I need the map again. Dragon Warrior Maps. NES Maps. Charlock Castle. I'm here? Yeah. I want to go down there. A stone man. Stone man hits kind of hard. Stone man hits kind of hard. But let's see. We do a lot of damage to him. He does a lot of damage to us. He has many hit points. He gives 65 XP. That's good. That's not bad, but he deals a lot of damage. Much more than the blue dragon. So maybe we want to, um, don't fight stone man. Do fight blue dragon. 
fuck's sake. <laughs> Weapon Lord commercials. That's pretty good. Yeah, Blue Dragon. Good encounter. <laughs> oh, you can two hit Blue Dragon. Nice. Blue Dragon was on what? The, uh... 360? It never really, like, made it onto my radar at all. Okay, we'll not fight stone men, and we won't fight axe knights. Yeah, these fuckers. We will fight blue dragons. These guys. And then we'll have to see what happens when we get further down. An inoffensive sock. Yeah, got him. Got him. Run away from the axe knight. Nope. Run. Okay, good. Stairs. Bonk. Bonk. Two hits. Two hits is better to have run away from that battle than to have fought it. If we only if we only take two hits. Okay, wizard is good. Wizard is good. Two hits and he's dead. And sometimes he only does eleven damage. Stairs. Here we go. Stairs. Okay, we're on the bottom level. Now here's my theory. Here's my theory. We got five heal mores. My theory is it might be a good place to grind down here. Because you run into some very high level stuff that doesn't exist anywhere else in the game. Like Red Dragon and Armor Lord or whatever. Armored Knight. Yeah, so let's stop spell on the Armored Knight. Okay, we can't do that. Let's just fight him. Chance hurt more. It's less dangerous than his regular attack. We're only doing like 25 damage to him. Okay, 70 experience. Not worth it. Not worth it. Use, whoops. Herb, two herbs. fight armor knight I want to fight red dragon Here's red dragon. What does red dragon do? Hey, some dude on Xbox. <laughs> How's it going? That's a pretty good that's a pretty good username. Red Dragon, 100 experience. Okay, Red Dragon is the is the enemy we want. Oops. Ah, oh, I want to finish this game soon. We need one more level though. Oh yeah, Red Dragon, fight. I think I'm being followed. What could they want from me? Shatterbox, thank you for the follow. A 
Hope you're enjoying the wonderful Dragon Warrior content. Yeah, I haven't played this recently at all until I started doing this, so... Uh, okay, wizard is fine. A wizard is fine. I got this. This guy, the Nintendo Gamekeeper. I, I discovered this in a, a pile of doodads I had laying around, and I was like, hey, I don't really remember this thing that, that well. And uh, it's got um, it's got like different different games in it. Batman I played Batman back in uh, August. Started on Dragon Warrior. It's got like Faxanadu, Mega Man Two, Ninja Gaiden Two, Super Mario Two, Super Mario Three, Ninja, Mutant Ninja Turtles, Tetris, and Zelda Two. It's got these games. Uh, kind of included in it and then there's some blank pages for you to put in your own games that you want to like like your progress milestones and stuff so kind of a very cool uh a very cool format for like this little book great idea to kind of go through and you know figure out what to play okay so we only need to kill 40 red dragons right Uh, I believe there was... Uh, was there a remake for this for the Super Famicom? Or was it just, um... Like, Dragon Warrior 2 and 3? There's Dragon Warrior 2 on the GBA as well? At some point, if I'm not mistaken? I forget which one's got the uh, Dragon Warrior 1 remakes, though. There's also, um... Dragon Quest got ported to the MSX. At least. There's some... There's some versions out there. Um, the MSX version, clearly, only in, in Japanese. Um, but yeah. Very popular series. I wonder if maybe, like, they just considered the, the original game too, uh, too simple. Maybe, you know, they, they might have thought, oh, this is, this is too simple of a game. We want to... Give people the, the, the better liked, more complex later games where there's a party and everything. You might not have uh, thought as much value existed in this uh, in the eyes of players. But I think it's a good game. It's it's good, but it it's not... The weird thing for this one is like... Um, Yeah, DQ1 and 2, and then uh, Remade 3. Is this a different encounter zone? There should be, like, this should be a secret. They should let you search here and get, like, an item or something, but they don't. Man, Dragon Warrior lasted until 2005? I thought they stopped Dragon Warrior way earlier than that. Weird. Yeah, so we're just down here grinding. We need to get to 34, uh, 34,000 experience to get to the next level. And then I think we'll be in good shape to kill the Dragon Lord. Oh hell, we'll just fight this guy. He does like 25 damage per attack though is the problem. Oh, he uses heal more. Fuck that. I mean, it's, at this point, I think it's 27 red dragons. 
54 wizards. Twenty five metal slimes or something. Stone Man is fine for XP, but they hit too hard. Red dragons are perfect because they don't <laughs> they don't hit too hard. Okay, you can run into red dragons outside of the swamp. Oh no, they have sleep. That's not good. I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll heal more. I do want to see, you know what? I do want to see how much damage. We're going to have to leave soon anyway. But I want to see how much damage I'm being followed. What could the uh, Dragon Lord does. Potato Chips, thank you for the follow. Shot the dragon. We're out of that. We can cast heal, right? Yeah, we can cast heal twice. Right. Dragon Lord, King of Kings. No, thou art a fool. We fight him. We gained one level. Uh, we gained one level since uh, our previous encounter. So I want to see what the uh, the second form that we fight here. I want to see how much damage we do with like three extra attack or whatever. All right, we need to cast heal more. Yeah, we're only doing, like, we're not even doing hardly any more damage. Okay, there we go. We can we can hit up to, like, 17. That's fine. But then that gets us out of the dungeon. We warp back. The king tells us, Death should not have taken thee, Dad. I will give thee another chance to reach the next level of experience. Uh, to reach the next level, the experience must increase by 1996. Now go, Dad? I'm gonna go get new herbs because uh, if I don't get new herbs, I, uh, We'll forget to. We want as much MP as possible for the, uh... We want as much MP as possible for the Dragon Lord fight. Now, you know what game I've never beaten that... I don't know... I don't know how difficult it might be to beat is uh, Dragon Warrior 3. Dragon Warrior 3 is like... It's such a big game. And so complex. <laughs> it's such a big game, so complex. There's so many mechanics, so many ways to like build characters and like secretly screw yourself over behind the scenes. Like, you can change classes? And it, like, lets you level up your stats, but then the way the stat scaling algorithms work, you can end up with, like, a magic user with no MP or a fighter with no strength. But I think what you can do, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not mistaken, if somebody can probably 
Somebody probably knows more about this than I, but if I'm not mistaken, what you can do with Dragon Warrior 3 is you can start out with a... You start out with a... Fighter? A goof-off? Uh, is it a fighter? No. It's a fighter or a soldier. A fighter or a soldier... A goof-off, a cleric, and a wizard, I think, is what you want, right? And then you do, um... Basically, what you do is, at one point in the game, you're able to find a book. And the book converts one of your characters into a sage. The goof-off... When the goof the goof off like basically sucks except they have high agility. And basically when the goof off gets to a very high level, you can change them into a sage. Like about a third of the way through the game or something like that. Maybe more, maybe like No, it's probably about a third. I always forget there's like a huge second section of the game that I rarely get to. And then so the goof off turns into a sage. Sages have access to all of the spells in the game, they have a better, um... They have a, a better selection of weapons and, a, and armor than the wizard. Better weapons than, uh... Anyone can convert to... Well, anyone can convert to Sage with the book, right? But only Goofoff can convert to Sage without the book, right? So, like, the, um, the idea is that you end up with, like, you switch your cleric, you switch your cleric to wizard, you switch your wizard to sage, and you sit, switch your, um, uh, you switch your goof off to, uh, sage as well. So you end up with a, or no, you switch your wizard to cleric. You switch your cleric to sage, and you switch your goof off to sage. So you end up with uh, a soldier, two sages, and a wizard that can ca or, and a uh, cleric that can cast wizard spells. And as a result, they can wear better armor or something. But I forget how that works and like when you want to do the switches and stuff. But I got to, like, the last time I played it, I got to the boss of the first, like, I don't know, the first two-thirds of the game, I guess. The second part of the game is not as big as the first, I understand. But, um, I got to, uh, Baromus. The, the focus of your main quest. And, uh... I could not defeat him. I, like... I just got owned. <laughs> like, I tried, like, four or five times. And, like, I could not... keep my characters alive and damage him sufficiently. Even with, like, um... buy kill or whatever. It, it just wouldn't... It wouldn't generate enough damage for me to, like, get through his shit. And then, like, he would just, like, wipe out characters in single... single attacks. The other thing is that, like, I think... when you do the goof-off thing, you need to, like... use the, uh, MP seeds... on that character or something or like you have to you have to grind the items that give you uh mp or the stat that increases mp or something because they'll be very fast so they make an excellent healer because you know they'll go first in any given combat turn um they also are good at buffs because you can uh you can um 
buff a character before they attack, I think. Like, guaranteed, instead of, like, not knowing what order they're going to go in. But I gotta look at, like, I gotta look up the, like, stat scaling and stuff. How to, like, how do you power game a perfect party for that? Metal Slime, come on. Oh, I can do three damage to the Metal Slime now. Better chance of wiping them out. Alright, we only need, um... 14 Metal Slimes now. Only 14 of them, right? Yeah. Seems like when the Metal Slime runs away, you, uh, you run into it again very quickly. Fourteen metal slimes or forty something demon knights. We'll kill a metal slime one of these days. Hey, small fluffy better, how are you? Donut warrior. The thing here is that, like, these battles are basically, uh, free. <laughs> Instead of the ones, uh, in the castle that are, like, there's a huge drain on your resources. Especially since you don't want to take every fight in the castle. Yeah, it's grind time. We're going to grind one more level, and then I think we can beat the Dragon Lord. It'll be, it'll be difficult, but I think we can. We need to get to 34,000 experience. I love that mohawk helmet on the knight. I think that's really well presented for the number of pixels that it is. Metal Slime. All I need to do is hit now. Oh, we can one-shot Metal Slimes. Sometimes. It is possible to. Without doing an excellent move. We would only need to kill 10 Metal Slimes. Now. Or like 30 Wraith Knights. It's like a consistent... This is a consistent trickle, but the trickle is faster than trying to do the more difficult enemies in the later later zone. Oops. There's still a possibility that this guy could kill us in one hit with sleep. Well, when I say one hit, I mean like... Yeah, hurt. Hurt more. <laughs> Heal. Heal more. <laughs> good. <laughs> they're like, they're good, uh, good descriptions. 
Good, good titles for spells. I think I'm being followed. What could they want from me? Fit trend. Thank you for the follow. This is dangerous, just attacking this guy. But whatever. Excellent move. 108 hit points. It's like triple overkill. All right. A third of the way there, and the remaining thousand. Only 600 and something points remain. 644 to go. But yeah, it's basically, at this point, I guess it's six times Four more encounters. Slightly less than that. Somewhere, somewhere in the vicinity of the high teens of regular encounters. Every time we get a. Uh, Time we get a metal slime, successful metal slime encounter. It's worth three times what the other encounters are worth. I swear we're gonna get this game. We're gonna get this game tonight. Excellent move. 91 damage. Come on, one more hit. One more hit. Yeah, got him. Look at that. That brings us work. At 800, that means only need 200 XP. Two more fights of slimes. Damn, got him. Only one more slime fight or like three more other fights. Getting spam texts on my phone. Any encounter now, we should should get it. Oh, we got it. This is this is gonna be a level, right? Do 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 do. Courage and wit have served thee well. Now hast been promoted to the next level. Thy power increases by two. Thy maximum hit points increased by nine. Thy maximum magic points increased by ten. That's one extra. That's one extra heal more spell, which is fantastic. We're gonna go check in with the king. We're gonna go check in with the king. Stairs. Greatly pleased. <laughs> I am greatly pleased that thou hast returned, Dad. For reaching thy next level of experience, thou must gain 3,903 points. So tell me of dead deeds. Yes. <sighs> Goodbye now, Dad. Take care and tempt not the fates. Tempt not the fates. That's a good. Uh, oops. That's a good thing to say to somebody when they're when 
they're leaving, you know? Instead of goodbye. Tempt not the fates. I'm looking over here. I'm playing in the other little capture window thing to see if it's an issue with, uh... I'm gonna check something. I'm gonna check something real quick. Oh, that's that window. Okay. This window's here. Okay. Okay. Let's close that window. Change this. This window. Close that window. Now. Any smoother. It might be slightly smoother. Might be slightly smoother. attacks folks we're, we're we're within reach we're within sight of the end here i don't know how many hit points the dragon lord's second form has but i'm pretty confident we can beat it if we get there with like full mp i should have bought a torch i could have used a torch in the dungeon okay it's still doing it's still doing the thing Still doing the thing. It is doing it slightly less frequently, though. Slightly less frequently. But since the God, how many encounters? I swear the encounter rate just goes up the longer you play the game. <laughs> They're like, oh, you must, you must be grinding. Here, let me help you out. Here, let me help you out with that. Let me help you out with your grind there. You know, I think most of the games that I want to add to my uh, to my blank pages in the Gamekeeper are what I what are co uh, considered like. I think they would have at the time referred to them as uh, adventure games, which is like Rygar, Simon's Quest. I don't know, maybe Battle of Olympus? I'm not sure about Battle of Olympus. But like, you know, those games that are like primarily action games but have a little bit more structure to them and have like some stats and stuff. I don't know, I don't know if I wanna do Willow. I remember Willow being kind of a pain in the ass to, pl to actually play. It was like, it just felt kind of weird. I was watching Moonbeam Arcade playing uh, Willow recently, and it reminded me, like, the game seemed really cool to me, but, like, I, I couldn't reconcile something about it. There was something that was just, like, uh, felt a little funky about it. Oh, is it is it the one where you have to die to save and like you can lose progress if you don't die at the right time or something? It was just um it was mostly like It was mostly like The thing that, the problem that I had with it was this, like, the... 
the way it felt to move around and hit stuff felt really like kind of haphazard to me like it didn't it didn't feel really like a run away from that guy fight this guy um it didn't feel really satisfying to like fight enemies it always felt kind of like 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 your your hit the hitboxes for your attacks didn't feel quite right the um okay radiant Radiant costs three, so we can use one Radiant. We have to make this Radiant last the entire dungeon. It's okay. I think we can do that. I think I've done that before. Ah, uh, we'll take this fight. Hey, Study Cam, how are you? We're closing in! On what will hopefully be the the uh, the finale of this. And then we can do the rating. Wrap up, I can eat dinner. Excellent move. Wipe out the werewolf with an excellent move. Down, stairs down. This way. Oops, I took a wrong step. Run from Stone Man. Stairs. Yeah, over here. And around. Bottom left. Blue dragon. Oh, excellent hit. One shot kill on the blue dragon. Good. Yeah, we can two shot the blue dragon. That's good. That gets us some experience towards our our next level. If we don't if we don't beat this guy in oh, another excellent move good we don't beat this guy in in this attack we'll know at least kind of how difficult it is to uh to beat him and whether we need to grind for another level if we do need to grind for another level uh it'll be really useful to have this head start on experience some of these guys don't make any sense to uh, to fight, though. Are there any lists of online games lost to the ages that haven't been dumped? As far as lists go, I'm not sure. Um, I know... Uh, what is it? Unseen 64... Is, is one of the better resources for, like, uh, lost media, fake games, and that kind of stuff. Um, Red Dragon worth fighting. I forgot the Red Dragon can cast sleep. Um, but online games in particular, in a, like, good list-based format, I'm not certain. I'm not certain. Jerk. Don't, don't block me in the front. Come on. There goes, like, 75 HP. We're gonna use up all of our herbs first. We don't want to heal completely to full. We just want enough to be able to survive running away from an encounter. Which, you know, could be a couple hundred HP. Because every step we take, 
every move we make, we uh, regenerate HP. So going healing all the way up to max HP is a little inefficient because like all those steps we regenerated like something like, I don't know, 50 HP or something. So now we can use one herb so that we're at full. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Dad. I am the Dragon Lord, King of Kings. I have been waiting long for one such as thee. I give thee a chance. I give thee now a chance to share this world and to rule half of it. If thou wilt now stand beside me, what sayest thou? Will a great warrior stand with me? No. Thou art a fool. A, a dragon lord draws near. He attacked before I was ready and did 16 damage. Did 47 damage to him. 37 damage. We killed him in two shots. Done well in defeating the dragon lord. The dragon lord revealed his true self. Command? Fight. Dad attacked. 17 damage. We're only taking 32 from his attack now. His fire breath still does a decent amount. We could die instantly from this. So we'll heal more anytime we're below 50. Hey, Retro Mega X. Yeah, he could kill us here. Heal. I don't know if I'm high enough level. We might need one more level. Uh, yeah, we can we can risk it. Heal more. I, basically, we do heal more every every other turn now. Unless he gets a really weak hit in. But he's breathing fire every turn, so. 26. We might be able to get two attacks in here. I tried using hurt more, and it, it said he was immune. Can we hurt more on him? Yeah, the spell will not work. One in 64 chance. Okay, yeah. There we go. We did it. Yeah, it's just attacks. Thou hast done well in defeating the Dragon Lord. Thou hast found the Ball of Light. Radiance streams forth as thy hands touch the object and hold it aloft. Across the land spreads the brilliance until all shadows are banished and peace is restored. I guess we go back now, right? Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, let's talk to the king! The legends have proven true. Thou art indeed of the line of Erdrick. It is thy right to rule over this land. Will thou take my place, Dad? thought carefully before answering. I cannot, said Dad. If ever I am to rule a country, it must be a land that I myself find. And thus the tale comes to an end, unless the dragons return again. There's lumps of flesh hanging off their trumpets. There we go. Congratulations! Thou hast restored peace unto the world. But there are many roads yet to travel. May the light shine upon thee. There we go. We did it! Dragon Warrior Staff. 
Scenario written by Yuji Hori. Character designed by Akira Toriyama. <laughs> yeah, if it turns into a Civ style name. Music composed by Koichi Sugiyama. Programmed by Koichi Nakamura, Koji Yoshida. Missed it. CG designed by Takashi Yasuno. Scenario assisted by Hiroshi Miyoko. Miyoka. Assisted by Rika Suzuki and Tadashi Fukuzawa. Special thanks to Kazuki, Kazuhiku Torishima. Translation staff. Translated by Toshiko Watson. Revised text by Scott Pelland. Something Doug Baker. Programmed by Kenichi Masuda and something Satoshi Fudaba. Special thanks to Howard Phillips, the video gamesman. Directed by Koichi Nakamura. Produced by Yuki Nobu Chida. Based on Dragon Quest. Copyright Armor Project, Bird Studio, Koichi something Chunsoft, Enix. The end. There we go. We did it. We beat Dragon Warrior. Kind of a large project for for this era. Many people involved. So there we go. There's the end. Yeah. Eight more to go. We'll get to them someday. For now, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to doodad time. Because we need to uh we need to fill this out. We need to fill out the uh, the ratings. We need to rate the game. We need to put the date completed. And uh, I need to fill in, I think it was the following day. I think it was the 19th that I got Erdrick's armor, or Ur Erdrick's sword and Erdrick's armor. And then what's the uh, what's the date today? Ten thirteen. There we go. There we go. Now, what did I think of this game? I gotta say, you know what? Like. I got to take this game in context of when it was when it was released and like how it was presented in the North American market. I don't think this game was awesome. I think I got to stick with my with my 1990 assessment that Dragon Warrior in in 1990 and beyond not taking its historical precedent into consideration. I think Dragon Warrior is one of the weaker RPGs on the NES because it came out it came out after Fantasy Star was out on the Sega Master System. It came out like what was it within months of Final Final Fantasy? And it's like it has decent kind of mediocre graphics. The scenes are nice where it like shows the little background scene in the window, and the later games didn't do that. So I think that's a nice thing. I love the design of it. If there was a sound rating, I would kind of... I would put the sound rating... Uh, like, low. <laughs> I don't think the sound is very good. There's some satisfying... There's some... Uh, there's some satisfying hit sounds, but they're really rare. And like, yeah, that's the thing, right? I remember this game. I remember feeling better about the graphics of this game. I remember feeling like, you know, it was it was pretty good. It was okay, but it was like, it didn't feel awesome, right? And you only get, you only get like, you only get two options. It's either lame or awesome, right? And so I think I got to say it's it's not awesome. So we're going to go with 
If it's not awesome, we've only got one other option. We can't say, oh, well, we're going to put a middle option. We've got to, it's decisive. It's one of the whole points of this. It's decisive. I'm going to say... <laughs> Now, the thing is, the thing is, if I were reviewing, like, the Japanese, the Fam Famicom version of it, it might be awesome because it was three years earlier or four years earlier or something, right? But in 1989, Dragon Warrior was not an awesome game. <laughs> the sound was, was not good, <laughs> right, for 1989. In 1986, maybe it was okay. Right. So um, what do I think of it? I think, you know, considering the game was three years old, though, I think the graphics are pretty good, but they're not great for 1989. We had, you know, the other the other games in this book is like we got Faxanadu, Mario 3, Zelda 2. We got like big sprites. We got like much more. Uh, stuff. The color and the design and everything is really good, but we're talking about the graphics. Yeah, Faxanadu, as 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 outlined in this book as uh, Faxandu. <laughs> Faxandu. <laughs> but uh, yeah, whoops. So I think I think the graphics stay as a three. I think the graphics stay as a three. Like the designs are great, but the execution was a little dated, right? It was a huge graphical improvement. There was a lot of like improvements over the Japanese version, but it still kind of felt like like this and um, Exodus, Ultima Exodus, uh, feel like like they they could have been a lot better in the graphics department, although they do some neat stuff. It's just that like the tile based like statically animating thing and and like just kind of chunky characters. Um it's good design but it's not like you know. It's not uh it's not that great. Challenge, I think this game is it's less challenging than I originally thought it's easier to understand later on. Um But it's like, yeah, I'd say like maybe a three. It's kind of medi medium challenge. Because you do have to figure out like when to grind, when to move on. What strategies to take against which opponents. Uh, this is for 2020. And, uh, you know, you, you got to consider it. I think... I think I had less fun with this game this time around than I did the first time around because there's a lot of it where there was just like there were some stretches where it was like the the place to grind was too a little too far out of reach so you had to go back and grind the safe areas and that took a little longer I think that sapped some of the fun out of it for me this time it's like, I'd say this is like a two in fun, two out of five. And the play control, I think the play control stays at two um, because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of lag when the, when the little like modal window pops up with your status, it can prevent you from doing any input for a while. And like, so you can get stuck in place, just opening and closing the status window. If you're like, you hit the button, your guy doesn't move, you take a second to process that your guy didn't move. You hit the button again, you hit the direction again. And by then the, the status window has tried to open <laughs> you're like stuck in place. And it's, it, I had one moment where I was really, really frustrated with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the speed run of this is interesting. Cause I guess the, the, um, RNG is pretty easy to manipulate. So, uh, you'd go in and you'd just like 
do certain things. You'd open the menus and, and advance probably like, I don't know, whatever the PRNG is. You'd advance it a couple of times. So it's like, okay, you got a metal slime. You act first. You get an excellent hit. You kill the metal slime. <laughs> so you can do like, you can skip most of the grinding. But yeah, I think that's where we that's where we end up. It's three three two two. Personal rating lame for Dragon Warrior in twenty twenty. I also find this funny. <laughs> Focus. We never found Princess Gwalen. We never found her. She's probably in a dungeon somewhere between two swamps. <laughs> there we go there's the there's the final rating for dragon warrior a little bit of a little bit of a decrease in the challenge department a little bit of decrease in fun but pretty similar pretty similar to the 1990 rating so now that we've done that i think we're gonna gonna wrap up i'm gonna wrap up i'm gonna have some dinner I'm going to try not to sneeze. Ugh. Let's see here. Let's uh, let's put on some music. We'll be back. I'll be back uh, soon. Maybe tomorrow. Possibly tomorrow. Um, with some more midday streams a little earlier in the day. Um, not sure what I'm going to play yet, though. Oh, let me save this timeout. Not sure what I'll... Uh, not sure what I'll play tomorrow. Probably wait on starting uh, Fazanadu. Oh, I didn't get the raid notification five minutes ago. St. Vesper, thank you for the raid. I did not get a notification for that, unfortunately. But I am just wrapping up. Just wrapping up. We did the raiding for Dragon Warrior. We finished Dragon Warrior. The end. There it is. Um... Tomorrow I might do um I don't know, I might do some of the Amiga stuff. I might look for a Sunday game. Yeah, raid notifications have been kind of buggy. Um they're trying they're changing stuff around in ways that I don't like about the notification stuff. Somebody wants to do a one person host, I want to see it in the chat. I want the option to turn that on or off, you know? Um but uh yeah we'll we'll figure something out. Let me put some music on here. But yeah, let's uh let's wrap up here. I'm going to go have some dinner. I hope everyone had a wonderful time. Oh man, that sucks MP3 MP83. I hope your uh, I hope your arm feels better soon. Yeah, let's let's look for somebody to raid here. Hopefully, Dot Level is still doing her. Uh... Yeah, I think Dot Level's Kadash. Oh, hell yeah! It's project her Project PC Engine for Dot Level. She's going through all of the uh, all the PC Engine games in chronological order, and uh, there might be some good games tonight. Hopefully, we'll catch her in time. But uh, this should be fun. 